Deep fly ball, a drive to center field. That'll get over the head of Robinson and all the way to the fence. Orbeck drives the lane, puts it up, right-hand nice lane, shot, gets it the fall. He'll go to line for one more. Very nice take by Zach Lorbeck. Trying to go around Angle. He stones him far side. Point blank got Angle again, and he stops him. Shotgun snap, Angle looking left, now looking right. Throw far side, throws a fade up for grabs. Hunter Beachler far side, pile on. He comes down with it. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Line and ball into left field, and that'll go all the way to the fence. Coming in to score will be Hilbert. Feed it in. Matty Ray, right hand lay in and down. Great seal by Ray. Jerks with a nice lob over the top. Four skates to the near side circle, looking for some time. One timer to Martin Suda. Knock off the water bottle. It's a one timer and a goal, and the Pirates, they extend their lead. He takes a swing at it. He'll send that one deep to right, and looks like that one's going to be a walk off grand slam for Joe Bayer. Swing in a fly ball to center Beekman. field. It's over! And that's it! The Pirates win it! Good evening and welcome out to Bayport High School. We get set for Fox River Classic Conference football as it's Friday Night Lights and it is homecoming from Bayport as it will be the Green Bay Preble Hornets coming into today with a record of 2-4 and four overall. And they sit in the Fox River Classic Conference at 2-2. Two and two. And they're taking on the Bayport Pirates, coming in with one loss on the season just a couple of weeks ago as Bayport is 4-1, and 3-1 one, and one in the FRCC. And with one more win, they can get that fourth conference win. And tonight, they can clinch a playoff berth. Good evening and welcome out. Chris Learman and Craig Booking are with you tonight as we get set for this conference matchup. And right off the bat, Craig, a matchup that we had in the spring where Bayport was victorious 35-0 and kind of a matchup that's, for the most part, albeit except for like maybe 2016 when Bayport was trailing the whole game, Jordan Ole senior and all that, yeah. um, it's kind of been dominated quite a bit by Bayport. Yeah, recent history has certainly been in favor of the Pirates as they've, they've dominated almost everybody in the conference for the last five or so years. That loss a couple weeks ago to De Beer certainly has, has gotten these boys amped up and uh, played a really good football game last week against Pulaski and in a driving rain and, and pulled the W there, 14 to zero. So they're looking, they're looking to keep the momentum going for sure. And uh, a Green Bay Preble team that probably is an opponent we should be able to handle, Chris. Yeah, I think uh, on paper, obviously Bayport averaging 28.8 points per game. Preble struggling offensively, just 11.2. Now looking at their games, they only put up six against an Appleton North team who I think is a top four team in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, they're solid. Obviously, they're in the conference with um, a Kimberly team. They got shut out against Pulaski, although Bayport was for three quarters as well. Yeah. Um, but a team that only put up six last week against Ashwaubert on a 40-6 to six, uh, game. And why is that significant? Ashwaubenon was winless before last week. Yeah, Ashwaubenon um, has had some plenty of losses this season as well and really handled Preble, like you said, 40-6. to six. So that, uh, that bodes well for the Pirates tonight, and we'll see, if, we'll see if the score is similar to last week's outcome for the Hornets. Pirates and the Hornets just ahead. We'll step aside, take a break, sit down with head coach Gary Westerman. Just sat down with him about 15, 20 minutes ago, and we'll have that for you here from Bayport. Hope coming from BP. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Football. Zesty's Frozen Custard and Grill. Zesty's serving up a full food and frozen custard menu. Now open right across from, Bay across from Bayport High School at 2639 Lineville Road. Offering a different flavor of the day, each day 11 until 9. Try their weekly special baskets or enjoy some of Zesty's awesome, fresh, frozen custard. Zesty's Frozen Custard and Grill, the finest frozen custard in town. Townline Pub and Grill. Looking for a place to grab some food? Stop at Townline. Taste the mouth-watering burgers, gourmet pizza, and endless appetizers. Offering a casual atmosphere and a lively feel. Why not stop in on the way to the game? Grab a bite to eat after the game, too. A night out, a group gathering after a sporting event, or even a birthday. We want to thank you for your patronage. Town line, where the people come for the food and stay for the fun. Hey, let's be honest. You know how it is. If you're a sports fan, there is no such thing as too much sports information. Well, that's just one of the reasons to follow Voice of BP on Twitter. We're talking live tweeting every Bayport broadcast. Don't stop there. Like us on Facebook, because when it comes to pirate sports, the more ways to get it, the better. Thank you. 
we continue the Vandervest Harley Davidson pregame show and we sit down with Pirate head coach Gary Westerman and coach you come off of a big win against a Pulaski team last week and what you described as a monsoon and weather you just look back at that game and obviously there's situations where hey we call timeout because we want to punt with the wind or punt with the weather how much does that actually affect a game and play calling and all that well, the first half was something else. I mean, you were calling plays really just to make sure we didn't turn the ball over, but our special teams flipped the field a number of times, and we tried to be smart coaching-wise. We did have that timeout. We punted with, uh, uh, punted, uh, or made them punt into the win once, I believe, and I think we punted with the win once, and so we really tried to flip that field position. Our our special teams did a great job, and our defense played lights out, and, uh, and then our offense made, you know, enough plays to... Um, to, to get it going, but we, I mean, it was as bad a weather game as I've ever been part of. You have a home game, homecoming game here, obviously tonight. Do you talk to the kids anything about that, or you just let, try to let them get into? Because obviously, there's a lot more festivities, all, obviously leading up to this entire week. Yeah, they seem focused, but I mean, we talk about the purpose of homecoming was created because there's a football game on a Friday night, and that's really why. And all the festivities are great, but you know, first and foremost, let's take care of the game and. Uh, take care of the game and then go and ha- go ahead and have fun after and so um that's all we really talk about and you know i mean we played well on homecoming so i'm not too concerned about it lastly a preble tonight and you look up in the box bookie is with me any words of advice uh no um you know i mean we're just really looking forward to the game you know our kids are looking forward to it and um you know and i i, I mean i think uh, high school athletics is special and we're fortunate enough to be back to normal a little bit here and uh, kids really need this type of stuff. They need a homecoming dance, and they need a homecoming game and a pep rally and school festivities. And uh, so, you know, those things are really important, and I'm just happy that uh, we have some normalcy and our kids are uh, our kids are excited to play. Awesome. Best of luck tonight, Coach. Thanks, Chris. Again, that's Pirate Head Coach Gary Westerman. We continue the pregame show after this. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Football. If a training run turns into a sprained ankle or spring yard work stresses out your shoulder, go to the Acute Injury Clinic at Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialist. It's not urgent care. It's not the ER. It's the same-day orthopedic care directly from an orthopedic physician, and no appointment is needed. The Acute Injury Clinic at OSMS is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., located at 2223 Lime Kiln Road in Green Bay. Learn more at osmsgb.com. Isn't it a, the, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit? I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Woo-hoo. The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape. Meet new people and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Wisconsin. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Tonight's Bayport football broadcast proudly supported by Zesty's Frozen Custard Grill, the finest frozen custard in town. The Press Times, your local paper and online source for Pirate Athletics. By Bell & Health, Title Town Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. By Townline Pub & Grill, Team Apparel and Specialties. By Synergy Sports Performance. And Doozy Sports Club. By Vandervest Harley-Davidson. By Advanced Digital. Bayport Hockey Boosters. Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialists of Green Bay. By Gallagher's Pizza, Italian Food and Irish Spirit and by members of the NEW Sports Radio Broadcasters Club. Chris and Craig on a Friday Bal- evening. Balmy, Chris, a balmy Friday evening for October. 82 it hit today. Which I believe is a near record. I think the record was 84, 85 here in Green Bay. So My goodness, it's October. I know. We turn to the uh, final month of the regular season calendar-wise as it's this game and then it's at Southwest next week. Home against Ashwamba on regular season, just like that, completed. Yeah, and you, and you look at the schedule tonight. We're playing a two and four Preble team, followed by uh, 
a one and five Southwest team and then a one and five Ashwaubenon team. So the the worst is behind us in terms of strength <laughs> of schedule, Chris. <laughs> yeah, although uh, that does mean some things too. It's always been kind of as Bayport tested as they go into the postseason, and then right. all of a sudden you have to meet up with some of those other schools from different conferences that are a little more competitive. But Bayport just ran the uh, "quote unquote" gauntlet, the middle third of their season after mm -hmm. starting with I thought was going to be a really strong Middleton team and really big Middleton team. Mm -hmm. Then Notre Dame is Notre Dame, Sheboygan North. But then you went at West De Pere, De Pere at Pulaski. Right. Turned out to be a pretty tough stretch. You knew it was going to be a tough stretch. West De Pere played really well that game. Obviously, De Pere knocked off Bayport and ended the 38-game winning streak. Yep. And a Pulaski team who, although I would have predicted the rain would have would hurt Bayport much more, mm -hmm. uh, Pulaski, 76 total yards of mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, w Westy pointed it out in the interview that the defense really stepped up to the plate last week. Tough conditions, forced a few fumbles, and really did not allow Pulaski to move the ball much at all. And as long as you don't turn it over and you win the field position battle a little bit, uh, good things happen for the Pirates in the fourth quarter there. Yeah, he mentioned specifically, sometimes you play just not to turn it over. <laughs> what was the, uh, what was, I mentioned 76 yards. If you take away that touchdown run on the first play of quarter number four, mm -hmm. Bayport had 81 yards. So 81 to 76, you wipe out that one touchdown. Boom, boom, it's right there. Incredible. That touchdown, obviously, and then the fumble on the uh, the punt attempt that went through the legs and then got dropped in the end zone and Bayport recovered. That was all that Bayport scored. That's all they needed um, for a defense that has moments this year, like holding on against West Pier. May mm -hmm. have gotten gashed a lot, but uh, they had to make three different stops of series because the offense – sputtered a little bit. I'm going to go out on a limb here tonight, Chris, and say that we're going to have more than 81 yards. On the opening drive? Maybe even on the opening drive. It depends, obviously, where the starting field position is. A touchback would be the 80. Conditions yards. tonight are much more favorable for offense than they were last Friday night in Pulaski, where it was blowing 30 miles an hour and raining sideways. Tonight we've got about 76 degrees and pretty much flat, calm conditions here at Pirate Stadium. I do not see much for the flags moving towards the concession stand at the south end of the field. We'll step aside, take one more final break as we get set for the national anthem. Starting lineups just ahead here from Bayport High School. It's the Pirates hosting the Hornets homecoming for Bayport High School. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Football. Do you have spirit wear to support your team? Do you have apparel to let everybody know who you work for? Team Apparel has you covered. Team Apparel is a leader in screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, trophies, plaques, and awards. With its in-house production, Team Apparel provides fast, quality service at a great price. Let Team Apparel work for you in promoting your business and organization. Visit Team Apparel at North Military Avenue, Green Bay, or at TeamApparel.com. At Team Apparel, quality is what we sell you. Service is what we give you. And Doozies, voted Green Bay's best bar three years straight, is pumping out some serious fun. And hey, look at there, you're on the guest list. <laughs> live and local is how Anduzzi's rolls with phenomenal live music every week. Time out. Have you been on the patio at Anduzzi's? Full bar, full menu, full service. Inside or out, Anduzzi's is ready for you to come hang out. And with four locations, I'm not seeing a viable excuse why we won't see you tonight. Anduzzi Sports Club, Green Bay East, Green Bay West, Kimberly and Howard. Online at Anduzzi's.com. So what makes Anduzzi's so different? Come and find out. Synergy Sports Performance is your local athlete's training facility. We build for speed, agility, and physical strength to make them better on the field. And we build character to make them better off the field. Work out with us at SynergyFields.com. Do you have any questions or comments? Get involved with the game. Tweet your questions and send your comments to Bayport Radio on Twitter at Voice of BP. Hornets and the Pirates on a Friday evening, week seven of the WIAA football season. Chris and Craig with you tonight. And the Hornets coming in tonight, we mentioned 11.2 points per game. Now look at them offensively. They kind of struggle to have an identity <laughs> offensively. We've had in the past where uh, they've had... Uh, some really good talent. Some linemen where three of them ended up going to Mankato to play. Henry Guile, a tailback right. in the Excellent past. Excellent tailback they, a few years ago. That uh, was recruited to go to the University of Iowa. Um, but they don't really have a distinct identity. They will uh, throw it around three receivers often. They don't really go power football, although they will play with a fullback sometimes. Um, but it, it's kind of tough um, if you don't have that. Obviously, Bayport. 
love to run the football, love to run power. You know they want to play physical. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a difference just initially. You look at the programs. Sure. Yeah, easy to see what the Pirates' MO is. Pirates coming in, uh, running the ball almost 80% of the snaps and uh, obviously passing it about 20% of the snaps. But we're going to play smash mouth football. We're going to try and push you around. And I'm sure there'll be more of, that, more of the same of that uh, here tonight. We are on with the huddle cam again, so the picture should be crystal clear and really good for you. We'll be able to flash your tweets across the screen if we are able to do so. And see what else we can provide for you. First, we'll listen in for the national anthem played by the Bayport Pep Band, and then we'll bring you the starting lineups. This homecoming performing the national anthem is the Bayport High School Choir, led by Michael Bluball. Homecoming from Bayport High School, Green Bay Preble and Bayport. Great to have you along with us as we move throughout the, the evening. Feel free to tweet the booth at Voice of BP, at Bayport HS. If you want to tweet Mike and get him involved in the evening, feel free to do so. I'm sure he would appreciate that, Chris. <laughs> He's one of the fastest responders to tweets and texts out there. I think Otis uh, did everything but gave out his number last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Fun having Otis in the booth, listening to him. He's got more Bayport knowledge than, than most, that's for sure. We're going to bring out the starting lineups tonight. Tonight's starting lineups presented by Zesty's Frozen Custard Grill. Zesty served up a full food and frozen custard menu across from Bayport High School, 2639 Lineville Road. Today's flavor of the day is Toffee Crunch. Stop in on the way to the game yet. Zesty's Frozen Custard Grill, the finest frozen custard in town. And for tonight's starters, Bookie, we look at the starting receiving core. Yes, we do, and, and we got four of them as they get introduced out here on the field and run through the helmet. Great experience for that offense, but our wide receiving core, uh, starting with a number six, Sam Barry. He's six foot one, 180 pounds. Uh, joining him out there is five foot 10, 175 pound, Ethan Shuro, and six foot one, 175 pound receiver, Cooper O'Connell, who get a jet sweep or two probably tonight as well. And a really solid tight end, happens to be a neighbor of mine, 6'3", 205, Colin Gale. Oh, 
as they introduce the defense here coming out. The Severson brothers. Vaughn leads the team, Vaughn Campbell leads the team in tackles for loss with 13. Oh, I take that back, that's Sawyer Stimson. My bad, but Vaughn's had his share as well. <laughs> one of your team captains, Evan French, who the last one announced at all these games. He's really a leader on and off the field for the Pirates. Great kid. Local well. Green Bay officiating crew, Tom oh. Senecal. Yes. And to follow tradition, Craig, did we watch the coin toss? Uh, never do. No, I missed nope. it. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of busy up here, Chris. <laughs> Full Pirate squad making their way to midfield. It appears that Bayport's going to be kicking because their hands team is already out there for Green Bay Preble. Does that mean we won the toss and deferred, Chris? I am uncertain of what that means. That would be my assumption, but Preble could have gotten the maybe, coin toss. Maybe they want the ball. ball. We'll see. We want the ball and we're going to score. <laughs> Those words did not work out for Mr. Hasselbeck. No. Did you see that when he was here for Monday Night Football two years ago? Uh, oh, yeah? They, they went to a bar and somebody yelled it at Ooh. him. He laughed really hard. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to brush that off. Hornets switch sides of the field. They're making their way from the north side to the south side. A little Fifth. confusion on where to go here, and the Pirates will be kicking off north to south. Back to return for the road team. All whites, white tops, white pants with forest green numbers and helmets for Green Bay Preble. Bayport in their navy tops, navy pants. White numbers and the navy helmets. Azure to do the kickoff duties, back to receive. It's Pierce Willems and Jadon Potter-Kanyata. We are ready for football. Just an outstanding atmosphere here at Pirate Stadium. I'm looking out the window right now, and there are very few places to sit. This is basically a... Full house, unless you want to go to the visitor section, I suppose. There's room over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people standing below the bleachers up along the fence due to the lack of seating. Azur with the tee off. He'll kick it from Swamako to Howard, left to right to get things underway and an end over end kick far side that will send Willems back to his own two yard line. Far side to the 10, 15, cuts right outside 20, 25 in front of the Preble bench as he advances across the 25 yard line where he is pushed out of bounds and the Green Bay Prebles will. Preble Hornets will start 11:53 opening quarter, and it will be Hornet ball, I do believe, at the 25-yard line. A name you're probably going to hear more than twice tonight, that's Tevin Montgomery on the stop on special teams there, forcing the runner out. He's your inside backer. One of them. One of them. More than twice. I'm going to hold you to that. Pretty confident <laughs> in that. Keegan Seagerson, your other inside linebacker. Hornets going to come out with three wide receivers and a tailback to the left of the QB. David Torres, the junior quarterback. Number 15 takes the snap, and he'll immediately sprint out to the near side, looking to the flat. Nobody there, under pressure in the backfield, trying to get away from one. He cannot get away from the second, and he will be taken down for a Bayport sack. Getting to him in the backfield after Lasecki couldn't bring him down. It was 45-23, and 23, Stimson and Gauthier. Great pursuit there, the sprint out to his left, and just nobody open downfield, so great job by the defense. Kind of a coverage sack, but that's a loss of 12 for the Hornets, and it immediately puts them into poor down and distance, second and 22. Yeah, already back to the 13-yard line for the Preble Hornet offense. Tight end goes to the left side of the line, tight to the formation, a little back off the line, single receiver to left. Slot right is the deep back, two yards behind his QB, Jadon potter Kanyanta. Just a sophomore. As Torts takes a snap, pitch it out to the tailback. He's going to try to get around Jojo Azur, despite a dive and attempt by 29. Bayport not in allowing him to get outside, and Judon is going to lose a couple. Yeah, tough sledding out there. Jojo 
got around the edge a little bit, forced him even more outside, and then a whole crew of uh, Blue Pirates swarmed him near the sideline. You know, in our Pop Warner coaching days, we would call this third and Pulaski. Okay, I was going to say third and a country mile. Yeah, third and a Same long thing. ways. Pirates defensively with the three down linemen, the four linebackers. Right now, only two linebackers on the field, it looks like, or three of them. They have an extra DB. Send a man in motion to the right. Torres take the shotgun snap. He does. Five-step drop. Pressure is stepping up in the pocket. He's going to be taken out of the backfield. Getting to the quarterback up the middle. It's going to be 45. Sawyer Stimson already a sack and a half for the senior. Yeah, the offensive line there for Preble just broke down and all sorts of pursuit to the quarterback. He set his back foot, and there's there's two Pirates on him immediately. So we're at about fourth, Chris, and 25 yards, so the punt team is obviously on here. Hornets to punt out of their own end zone from the five is where the snap comes from. Punt move is towards the quarterback, and he'll punt one. That will be caught by A.J. Corshane at the 39. Try to go right the entire way, 25-20. Hurdles the guy at the 15 and take it out <laughs> inside the 15-yard line. A.J. Corshane, a return from the 39 to the 12, 27 yards, and it's first in 10 Bayport offense. Yeah, really impressive catch and run there. You know, a lot of times at this level, the punt isn't all that far, so there's a lot of fair catches, and there's a lot of letting the ball just fall. Great job by A.J. grabbing that sprint and right and gaining 27 yards. Puts us in fantastic fantastic field position. Pirates at the uh, Preble 12-yard line. 9-12 to go in the opening quarter. Bayport the plus 12. Usually f fares well if you can start possessions at this location. Low snap, it's going to be handed off regardless. Give it to Bookinger, bounce it outside. Blake <laughs> to the goal line, into the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> Bayport Pirates. 33 to start at tailback. He gets the carry, gets it out wide. Bayport is on the board. And the fireworks are going on. Hey, I might, need, I might even know that running back. <laughs> Blake Bookinger, second career touchdown for Craig Sun. Well blocked. He, uh, he wasn't touched, bounced it outside to the right. And uh, good vision, one good cut, and he's in for the 12-yard touchdown. Eight seconds. Bayport is able to strike in. And now the extra point as Bayport up 6-0. Nick Fitt, your place kicker here. Snap to Evan French, you kick is up. And good. 7-0 Pirates, 9-0-4 remaining. First quarter of play. Boy, tough sledding to start. I hope somebody got a picture of that little touchdown celebration. A uh, little book jumped in the air, and one of the linemen threw him up to about 11 feet in the air, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive defensive uh, series there for the Pirates, and all we needed was one play after that excellent punt return by A.J. The Melkor is watching tonight. Great to have you guys along with us. 9.04 to go in the first. Bayport is already on the board. <clears throat> All sorts of people chiming in here on the text string. We got to give a shout out already to the Bradley crew, the Baloos, and the Gannons. They are on their way here, running a little behind. Maybe the uh, before game festivities took a lo little longer than normal. Yeah, grill went fire up. Ah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Happens all the time. 7 nothing Bayport less than three minutes in. Azur for the kickoff. Willems will try to come up and find Ball's a squib kick at about the 20-yard line, and there's a scrum there. And who will be able to get to it? It appears that the Hornets will take over with nine minutes to go here in the first. 
Ball came loose, ran it a little ways. Ball came loose at about the 20, and I thought maybe one of those Pirates, maybe Landon Gothier had a shot at it, but the Preble kick returner comes up with it. It'll be first and 10, 20-yard line for Preble here. Well, see if Preble can go in the correct direction here, Chris. They went 25 yards the wrong way last possession. Yeah, not ideal to be going away from your own end zone. Send the tight end in motion. He looks to be a blocking back as they try to hand it up the middle and immediately slicing in defensively. 23 land in Gothier, and he will stop the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage on the give to Potter Kanyanta. Yeah, land in Gothier playing that edge. Hey, just a sophomore, 6'3", 200 pounds, and, and really built. Spends a lot of time in the weight room, and he is a tough guy to handle out there on the edge. Great play. No gain, we go to second and 10. Ten yards ago on the second down play. Palat, or the uh, Preble Hornets, three wide receivers, which we'll see majority of the evening. Tight end left. He'll go in motion to the right. Torres snap Fumble. through his hands to the back. It's in the on the turf, and Gothier's <laughs> gonna take him down. Did hey. I just mention that Landon was pretty good? Boy. Well, you get free releases off the edge, and it's fumbled through the hands of the quarterback. A little high for Torres. Yep. David had to track it down. Shotgun snap. Deflects off his hands, goes back, and by the time he's got it, he's got three Pirates on him again, and the first one there is number 23, Landon Gothier. So not going to go down as a sack, but it will go down as a fumble and lost yardage for Green Bay Preble. Third and 20 from the five, Chris. <laughs> Hornets have their tailbacks and quarterback heels on the end zone. Play action, screen a, play. Wide, a screen oh. over the middle, and it's dropped off for the tailback. Pursued up the middle by the Bayport defensive line. A nice little dump off over the big guys, but just dropped on the play by Pierce Willems. That play actually had a chance to, to gain some yardage, Chris. Uh, yes. As, as we sent all our linemen back, and he just hoisted it right over the line, and that, that running back had some space as the linebackers and the defensive backs were following receivers. Fourth and 20, again punting from their own end zone. Elaine Crone. Out there watching along with us, Dan Hebel, Melissa Bame, a cast of... Others as a treble punt. will go out of bounds inside the 30. Inside the 20 at the 19. Goodness. Starting field position for the Pirates at the 19, which is seven yards worse than last time. T. Bix listening from Grandma's house. How we doing, T. Bix? Good to get a shout out from T Bix. Great kid. 7 12 to go in the opening quarter. Bayport Pirates on offense. Benson, quick throw to the far side. A wide receiver screen and a catch is made with the knee down. Yep. So O'Connell will make the grab, but once your knee is down in high school and in college, you are in fact down right there on the spot. Play had a chance to gain five, six yards. He had a little bit of room, a couple blockers out front. Pass maybe just a touch low and knee down, and we go to second down and 11 yards. Back to the 20 for the Pirate offense. And Barry in motion, snap to Benson. He's going to run it up the middle, hesitate, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, keeps the feet driving, oh. spins off a guy, gets <laughs> to the 10, to the 5. Cole Benson through a pile, through the end zone. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Kept those legs driving. Cole's a really strong kid. Puts a lot of time in the squat rack, and it showed right there. He had a whole bunch of Preble Hornets wrapping him up, and he just wasn't going to quit. Drives the legs and in for the score. Pirates 13 to 0. And so far we have ran three plays, Chris. Two of them have scored. Two of them we've scored. That's a pretty good average. From Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
The Chambers, Otis and Karen. Hi, Otis and Karen. <laughs> How you doing? On the way to, uh, well, maybe you shouldn't have necessarily left. The warm weather right now is here, but <laughs> go visit Carly for an extended period of time. Extra point is up and good. It's 14-0. There's still 6.27 to go in the first. And good old Nick Fitt, senior kicker, has not missed an extra point yet this season. He has not. I'll knock on, I'll knock on wood there All a little right, bit. That's good. That's remarkably good. consistent. I think we had a kicker a couple years ago who uh, made like 80 some extra points. 90 on some, season. I think. 90 some. Mr. Austin Heim. Jeannie Manning watching from Three Lakes. Kathy Krause from home and uh, get in. Just blue. How many fireworks did we purchase for the night? I'm uncertain hmm. of that number. Um, Mark Warziger said he is watching and listening for the fireworks while watching the stream. <laughs> He's out on the patio. First quarter of action, Chris and Craig tonight with you from Bayport. Azur for the kickoff. Run up and sends one way back and it will be taken at the three yard line for the Hornets, 10-15. Bounce it outside, trying to get to the 20 and swarmed under. Here's the returner, Potter Kenyanta. And the young man will be taken down Inside the 20, where Green Bay Preble will start with their third possession of the night. They've gone three and out, three and out so far, two possessions. Look like number 24, A.J. Corshane, sealing the edge over there and getting the stop on the kickoff. Preble will take over where they've taken over the last two times, right at about the 20, and again, we'll see which direction they go here. First and 10. They mark at the 19-yard line. Three receivers again for the Hornet offense. Tailback to either side of the quarterback, David Torres, and the junior takes the snap, hands it off the right side, and to the 20-yard line, a gain of a yard for Green Bay Preble. Yeah, pretty tough sledding up through the middle there with that Pirate defensive line. Gain of one, second and nine for the Hornets. Halftime, girls golf coach Jeff Johnson. Fresh off of a regional title. Fourth in a row, I believe, for the Lady Pirate golfers. Fantastic squad again this year. Parts looking to feast on Torres. He's going to sprint to the near side, pressure in his face. Throw it to the near side flat. Intended receiver is Quentin Ramsey. And that will go incomplete. A lot of pressure from JoJo. Not much time for the quarterback to throw there. Evan French in coverage. Had pretty good coverage to throw missed wide. But here we go, third and nine for the Pirates. We'll see what the Hornets try and dial up to get their first first down of the game. Yeah, and the high school level trying to sprint out and throw against that way. Yeah, that's uh, a not, tough play for yeah, a QB. Not easy to throw. Owen Miller, Nick Remaker out there. Pirates third and nine defensively against the Hornets. Green Bay Preggle high snap. Torres brings it down. Not a great defensive pass rush. Good play, protection. Mason. Throw to the right side. And it's knocked down by Mason Clark. As for the first time today, really, that offensive line held up very well for the Hornets. Yeah, just really good coverage by Mason. About a... 10-yard out pattern, and Mason gets his hand in there and knocks it down, forcing a treble hornet punt attempt here. Debbie Meyer out there watching along. Back for the Pirates, uh, number one, Evan Frenchu, number 24, A.J. Corshane. There on the opposite side of midfield. Nearly punt attempt from Torres, gets it away. From the 49-yard line, A.J. Corshane will be... Rodeo down at the 48, a three-yard return. 5.21 to go in the opening quarter. Bayport has ran three plays. They've scored two touchdowns, and they will have the ball on offense. 
Mr. Michael G out there, watching along from his basement. Mr. Frieder, great to have you with us. How many times does he want us to say his name, you think, on air tonight? Is that one? We no. should probably give him at least 10 shout-outs. He is Mike Frieder, after all. He hasn't been in school for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mike, here we go. Pirates, your tailback is number three, Tevin Montgomery. 521 plus 49. We're starting field position of the day. Benson looking in the flat, throws it to Brighter, Ooh. and it's going to be a little too far for the fullback. Had some green in front of him, but it will go off the fingers and fall to the turf incomplete. Yes, he did. Fullback in the flat just missed him as Tevin comes out. Jackson Jaguar will come in as your tailback. Number 28, a junior, 5'10", 170 pound, quick kid. I know you uh, you want to hit him so he keeps running, but I don't think in the flat often, not always the best hands in a fullback. And <laughs> sometimes you just got to lob it to him out there. Unless you're Alec Ingold, Chris. Well, not everybody's built quite like Alec Ingold. No, not many. O'Connell goes in motion, and it's going to be a speed option near side. He'll get the pitch, try to get back to the line of scrimmage, and he will on the near side. Cuts back to the 45. And it will be a gain of about four for the Bayport offense, setting up third down and six. Yeah, Alec Ingold, if you listen to the uh, the intro to our broadcast, yeah, Alec Ingold is on the intros because his senior year was our first year calling games. You probably said his name a lot that year. Scored a lot of touchdowns, I think as I recall. Once or twice in game one, once. I know, at least. <laughs> Tevin Montgomery in the backfield again. Looks like third and six here for the Pirates at the Preble 45. Dean to get to the 39-yard line. Pirates shift the formation tight end and full back to the right side of the line. Single receiver to the near side, O'Connell. Barry goes to the left, and it's going to be handed to the right side. Montgomery's going to carry a linebacker down to the 40. Again, Bayport needed the 39. It's going to be a long yard, nearly two to get to the sticks, and I assume that Bayport's going to try to go for it. Yeah, with that play call, Chris, you got to figure he was thinking two downs anyway. If we don't get it on this down, we'll, we'll have another chance to run it. And fourth and one here from the 40-and-a-half yard line. And uh, Is this pirate package? I do believe. This will be the blast pirate. Benson goes under center, single receiver to the left, and Barry was never set, exactly. Mike and I have talked at nauseam about why do you rush the line and go if you are going to play power football and you think you can do it against anybody. Barry never got set out there. Now that's a five-yard penalty, and it's fourth and six. Yeah, just didn't have time to get out and get set, and uh, they're going to back us up here. Game's first penalty. That likely changes the play call, Chris, because that pirate package is going to get you a yard or two 90% of the time, but now you're faced with a fourth and six. Chances are we're calling a different type play here. Mark See Horsinger what? said he ran a lot that year. He was the chain gang when Alex was a senior. <laughs> That's a tough job when Alec is uh, running touchdowns all over the place. Tevin's still your tailback here. Cooper O'Connell split out right, Sam Barry to the left. Barry is set this time. That wasn't his fault. He just simply can't get out to his position on that. Benson play action rolling out against his body. Now looking deep, pressure from both sides. It evades a sack, throws it far side, yeah. tipped away and incomplete. Mayport's going to turn it over on downs. Uh, no, Looked like the first read was to the fullback again in the flat, but he was well covered. And then the next option was Sam Barry downfield, and looked like he was pretty covered. So good coverage by the Hornets downfield, and we turn it over on downs. Preble will get the ball at their own 45-yard line, first and 10. After two minutes and two seconds time of possession, Bayport's longest drive of the day. <laughs> they come up empty, and it will be Hornet football at the 45-yard line. 3.19 to go in quarter number one. Bayport turns it over. Hornets bring a man in motion. In front of the quarterback. Settles in the slot left. Torres sprint to the left. Looking with pressure in front of him. Throws it near side. A comeback route across midfield. And it's going to be just incomplete. I'm tempting to get the comeback route to Nick Becker, the senior wide receiver. And it's going to skip on the turf as Becker tries to scoop it up. Incomplete. Ball had to come out. Number nine, Keegan Severson, all over the quarterback on that sprint out. Put the quarterback on his back, and he'll, he'll remember that next time he rolls out that way. 
Great pursuit by Keegan. <coughs> it's just tough. It eliminates two-thirds of the field also when you're sprinting out. Correct. Kind of why tough for Bayport on that down, on fourth down, why you would elect to do that. For sure. Single receiver go wide to the right. That's Eli Dabraski. He's going to step off the line. Two receivers to the left. Torres, that quarterback, five yards behind his center. The ball's going to be snapped to the 45. Hornets trying to march to the north for another 313 of this quarter, and we're going to have a delay of game penalties. Oops. Tommy Williams with the official call. The officials, Tom Senecal and crew we mentioned. And that will be the first penalty on Green Bay Preble. <clears throat> 21 and a half is going to beat the over in the first half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second down and 15 after that delay a game penalty on the Hornets. So that sets a second and 10. It's a lot tougher to manage. Two receivers right. Torres is going to shift Willems to his right. Snap to Torres. Straight five-step drop. Throws to the near side. A comeback route on the sideline. A grab is going to be made in front of Frenchu. However, Becker couldn't stay in bounds. Actually, a really nice-looking pitch and yeah, catch. Yeah, well executed. Looked to me like a back shoulder play that you see in the NFL. Really, Evan, in good coverage. They just threw the ball while they were running down, and Preble receiver just stopped and caught the ball one foot out of bounds. Yeah, that was a very nice-looking play from Torres to Becker. Just couldn't keep the feet inside of the plane surface. Third and 15, and now the Pirates defensively maybe watch for that screen again last possession. If they didn't drop the screen pass. Yeah, you might be looking for that too with how downhill that the Pirate linemen are coming at the quarterback. It's a good play option for Preble if they can pull it off. Campbell in the middle, Lasecki to the left end, and now we're going to have a timeout by Coach Gresson with 3.09 to go here in Quarter number one, Green Bay Preble wants to talk things over. Allows us to remind you, you can come watch the video stream of Pirate Football Games at the Swamico location of Gallagher's. Enjoy the in-house drink specials, half-off appetizers during the game. Look forward to seeing you for the next one. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, and Irish spirit. 14-0 here in the opening quarter. Chris and Craig. Next week is Mike and Craig. I am gone for my brother's wedding, so uh, it'll be audio only, but it'll be Mike and Craig from Southwest. Oh, like the good old days. Yes. Audio only. Yeah, before we started spoiling people Vis even more. The visitor's booths are sometimes kind of interesting. We're, yep. pretty, we're pretty luxurious here, here at the home stadium here. We got lots of room. Amy Hogan is great to work with, and she said it's really tight in the press box, but I do have two seats for you guys. Fantastic. Third and 15 for Preble. Torres, high snap. Azur off the edge, trying to take down oh. from the back. And he will get to the quarterback, JoJo, for a loss of 12 on the sack. Boy, he just comes around that edge so fast. That DN had no chance in blocking him. Quarterback had no time. And from the blind side, JoJo gets the sack. And... Once again, we are fourth and 27. That's been about the average fourth down and distance for Preble tonight. Somewhere around fourth and 25, fourth and 30. And they will be punting from their own 28. Evan Frenchu and A.J. Corshane. 35 yards downfield or so waiting for the punt. Again, the quarterback is also the punter. Torres at the 15, move forward, minimal pressure, and he will get a nice punt off. The French will fair catch at his own about 37, maybe the 38-yard line of Bayport. From their own side of the field for the first time tonight, they will start over with 2.14 to go on the first quarter clock. Yeah, looking to get back some of that momentum we had on the first two drives, obviously scoring right off the bat on drive one and on the second play in drive two, and then... A little sloppier there in drive three. So looking to correct that up, get another touchdown on the board, hopefully here for the Pirates. Again, send us a note. We'd love to hear where you may be listening from with the Pirates. Up two scores here in the first quarter. Buckinger, the tailback. He's had one touch today. 
Make it two now as he tries the right side. Follows his blocking, gets to midfield, and he'll be upended, but not before he gains a substantial yardage. 18. He's up to 30 on two touches. Yeah, not too bad there. That's that same play call, pin right, and uh, he makes one cut. Gets the speed up and um, one one or two tackles away from busting that one. Good run. Gain right. 18. If he didn't have Lisa's athleticism. Right. Him and Abby would be in trouble. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> goodness. Under two minutes till the end of the quarter. Montgomery in at tailback. 44-yard line. Pirates now marching to the south and just up the left side, oh. and Tevin's going to get tripped up across the 40, down to the 39. He had a head of steam, Chris. If he doesn't get tripped up there, I don't think anyone's catching big Tevin. And he knows it, too. Hey, he slapped the ball in, in disgust there, but great run, great downhill running, and I don't think anyone wants to get in his way. No, not too many people. Uh, um, obviously, he had nine touchdowns in the first four weeks or five weeks of the season, so he was doing pretty well. Booking her back in at your tailback here. Brighter in at fullback. Received either side again after a gain of five. And Blake trying to press the right side. And he'll get it down to the 36. Leaves him with third and two as we tick under a minute to go in the first. Nice gain there on second down. Leaves us a short down and distance here. Third and two from the Hornet 31. Green Bay Preble's got a... Player with a hurt hand or wrist. Trainer's going to come out and talk with the young man. Yeah, never good when you're holding your arm out and looking at it like something's wrong, right? No. Mm. That's number 88, Berg Reese. Reese Berg. Reese Berg. Yeah, uh, Preble Prince, their last name, then first name in the roster. Well, would you look at that? Not recommended. I'm glad you corrected me so early in the broadcast, otherwise that'd be bad. <laughs> Not, uh, just got to flip the two columns, you know? Right, it's pretty easy. Tevin Montgomery, your tailback. Pirates need two yards. It's third down. 3-4 defense. Montgomery right side. Gets across the safety. Breaks the arm tackle into the end zone. A carry of 36 yards. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Boy, once he gets a little space and he gets a full head of steam, nobody wants to get in his way, so... You saw an arm tackle attempt there, but an arm tackle is not going to bring down number three. As the fireworks go off here at Pirate Stadium once again. Pretty much a packed house here. We got people standing along the fence. Great atmosphere, great night for football. Three plays, 62 yards for the Pirates on offense. Sorry, four plays, I beg your pardon. A minute 50. And Bayport to try to push up what's now a 20 to zero lead. Nick Fit. I knocked on wood, he should knock it through, Chris. Uh-oh, low oh, snap. Oh, bad snap, Evan's gonna try and toss it. He throws back. Far side, throw it up for grabs, and in the end zone, a jump ball. Who's got it? If it's a tied possession, it might be Bayport for two. And are they ruling it no good? They are Looks like the Preble player must have had more of the possession than, I think that was Keegan, right? Keegan yeah, Severson Ke went Severson up for over there. Snap a little low, or a lot low, and Evan had to uh, quickly get up and try and find a receiver, and we miss our first extra point, and we're at 20 to 0. Jaden Montgomery listening in. He's tuning in. He said, boys are playing well. Jaden, hope everything is going good for you, and everything went well today. Yeah, they Pirate push it back to this week. Yeah, Pirate Nation's got your back. Stacy Baines out there from home in Suamico tonight. They port 20 to 0. Long snap skips back. So on the next touchdown, do you go for two just to, you know, Keep it that nice, even touchdown I number. Th see, the, the thing <laughs> is, they always, when you set 33 and you go for two to try to get it to uh, the running clock, people get really mad about yeah. it. Yeah. But at this rate, you need an extra touchdown to get to the running clock, so right. it would be 34. 36 seconds left. Jason Berna out there. Jason, great to have you along. We celebrated the 50 years before the game. Uh, oh, out cool. on the uh, patio behind Bayport. 50 years of Bayport wrestling. 
And a very successful history at that. Willems try to cut across the 20 in arm tackle. Yeah, by Coach Gavin Severson. Coach Shefchek, Coach Berna, Coach Hansen, Coach Schluter, all those guys do such a great job with the wrestling program. Huge shout out to those guys. I think they had the uh, state champion Drake Anderson over there today. Didn't yeah, they? I saw him. 28 seconds left in the opening quarter from the 22 yard line. It will be Pulaski football. They trail 20 to nothing. You said Pulaski football. Oh, did I? Sorry, Preble. See, now I'm correcting you. Back-to-back -back weeks against a P. I can't <laughs> do that. Similar starting position for Preble on their own 22 after the kickoff. Hornets with four wide receivers. Willems is the tailback. He's going to shift to the left of his QB again. Torres, who's been in shotgun all night. Pressure from the near side. He's going to lob it on the sideline. Throws it up and going to be incomplete. Good defensive play made by Evan Frenchu to cut off and force the wide receiver out wide. Trying to get past him was Nick Becker. Maybe had a half a step. But Frenchu, what the defensive back coach is, Andy Cross, and Joe Schluter teach is you want to force him wide with your hip. Absolutely, and Evan was running basically stride for stride for him with him down the field. And again, Landon Goff here right in the face of the QB. Twenty-two seconds left in the quarter. And Willems trying up the middle, and they pour it up the middle. Says no defensively. As Lasecki is there, Stimson with him. And the defensive line right now. Negative yards allowed rushing as the quarter will come to a close. End of one from Bayport. It's been all Pirates, 20 to nothing. Listen to Bayport Pirate football. Welcome to Bell & Health Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, where we've taken the best of sports medicine and orthopedic care and placed it where the world can find it, in the Titletown district next to Lambeau in a league of its own. At Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, we've made sure every aspect of your experience feels like a home field advantage. With elite care from the same Sports Medicine's Fellowship physicians who treat the world's best athletes. So whether you're an athlete who wants to get back in the game or someone who just wants to get back to life with less pain, Titletown is where your comeback begins. Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics from Bell & Health. We write comeback stories. Learn more at bellin.org slash Titletown. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Sports on NEW Sports Radio at newsportsradio.com. 20 to 0 Bayport over Green Bay Preble start of second quarter. It'll be Hornet football facing third and 11. That second down run attempt absolutely stifled by the interior of the line. Sawyer Simpson Lisecki, those are tough guys to move. Hornets now going left to right. Throw it far side. A completion to Becker trying to get by French. Ooh, first down, Hornets. First time today, they move the sticks. It's going to be for a completion on the play of 18 yards. Yeah, again, another pretty darn well thrown ball by Torres on the out pattern. Continues his momentum up the sideline a little, a little bit before French you can tackle him down. But a first down for the Hornets. First one of the game, and they are at their own 38-yard line. Willem, fake to him. Keeping it will be Torres, and Stimson is going to bear hug from behind and pull the ball carrier back, and the quarterback will gain a yard, maybe two. Yeah, fake, fake the handoff there to number 40, Alexander Yang, and then Torres keeps it. Nowhere to go. Interior line, getting pushed through that line. Loss of one. First quarter stats. Ooh. 
100 positive yards for the Pirates, negative 43 for the Hornets. Oy. Shotgun snap again. This time it is Willems on the give. And a yard to the 40. Third and eight. Let us know how the huddle cam, if you uh, like doing that. We'll have one more game with it, home against Ashwamad on week nine. Once we get to the postseason, uh, we will not. We will not have the huddle cam yeah. in the postseason. Vaughn Campbell on the tackle there. Sets up a third and eight here for Pirates. Playoffs is, uh, you have to play media fees. It's $200 a game for video. Oh, come on. So, uh, is that no, a we WIA thing? Yes, yeah. that's how it, it's always been that way. Okay. Pressure up oh. the middle and a sack coming through, and it is Joe, Joe, Joe Azur. Boy, take your medicine with both ends there. JoJo and Landon Goth here are just absolute beasts coming around the edge. Well, a shout out to Dad from Grace Krause. The defense has held Preble negative 43 yards, you said, in the first quarter. Yeah, and then they gained, what, 18, and now they went backwards 14. So yeah. by my math, they're about negative 29 yards. Goodness. Dan Hebel out there. Dennis DeBush is watching Bayport on the laptop. Fond du Kimberly on channel 32. Punt to be caught by Corshane, and he elects to not fair catch, and he elects to get popped because of it. Yeah, we are typically a fair catch type team, but we've been fielding these punts in traffic, and nowhere to go for A.J. there as the Hornet defender tackled him. Jillian Marie Laframboy out there. Says, let's go, Pirate. Connie Klusman, Tammy Free Wright, Robin Watson, Stephen Eldry out there, Gary Nyes, and Andrew Podlasik. Says uh, the stream is six seconds behind the crowd reaction that he's getting in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he must live close. That's pretty cool to be able to hear that in the community. The roars, the fireworks, good so old Friday Night Lights. You can uh, hear the fireworks go off before I even tell you it's a touchdown. <laughs> Bayport takes over from the 36. Benson rolling gonna back. He's going to try to air one deep. He's got Barry behind the defensive oh. back. And Sam did everything but catch the football. Yeah, maybe misjudged just a little bit. It was thrown pretty well. Sam had a step. And now the D-back that was covering Sam is down with a leg injury. Took a shot there on first down. Sam going post down the middle of the field. Well thrown ball there by the quarterback, Cole Benson. One heck of a baseball pitcher as well, so he's got the arm to chuck it. As the teams go to their sidelines while they tend to the injured player here for the Hornets. Do we have a score update I will for check. the DePere Redbirds playing Notre Dame tonight? I Jack believe. Darmody out there. Kyle, watch it along with us. Um, let me see if I can get to a an update. DePere, the only undefeated team in the conference yet. They've got a couple of yep. challenging games ahead of them, so we'll see how that pans out. Doug and Michelle Geisler from the backyard. Oh, we do have a score update here from Mike Plummer. 17 what? to 7, Notre Dame Shut over up, to Mike. Pier. Really? That is interesting. Now, do you know that crossover games do not count in the conference title race? Is that a crossover game? Yes. So even if Notre Dame would win that, it wouldn't really matter? Correct. It matters for the playoffs. They are in the FRCC South. Is that yes, what you're telling correct. me? Yes, correct. I was not aware of that. Interesting. I wasn't either until Scott Vincy. When uh, last Saturday from the Press Gazette, they did the article uh, talking with uh, the commissioner, Gary Sievert, yep. or two Saturdays ago, whichever it was. Because um, we, uh, we talked about relegation. Quite frankly, Preble and Southwest are not very good. Mm -hmm. But you put them to the south, they're probably going to make the playoffs because you'll play east, west, north, and south. Sure. Almost just a given mm -hmm. as Buccaneer will pick up seven yards on second down. So, yet you evened out the play or the – all the top teams are in one conference, which is awesome. You get to play the best teams. Correct. However, 
Manitowoc is undefeated in conference because they play you north, south, east, west. They're going to make a playoff. better that misses the playoffs. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. It's it. kind of a catch-22, right? First down play, booking her up the middle for seven. Second nice down play run. after the incompletion. Oh, remember. yeah. Third and three here for the Pirates. Third and three, two, number three. Going to sidestep the right side. Montgomery's going to break a tackle, get across midfield, and he will be taken down. That'll be two for the Preble wrestler. But Montgomery will pick up first down before that. Yeah, great run by Tev. Sees a little hole to the outside, bounces it, and then he takes on the safety head on. Safety makes a nice tackle, but he's going to he's gonna feel that one tomorrow for think, sure. Nice run by Tevin. I think Bates is at the game. Bookinger and Barry enter the game here. Barry, wide receiver, Bookinger at tailback. Yeah. First uh, and ten. Greg Bates is at the game for uh, the press times. 17-7. Wow. And we're going to have a Tom Seneca going to perhaps adjust the clock with 8.31 to go. Adjusting the clock here a little bit, taking 10 seconds off. There'll be 8.21 left. Hey, second quarter here from Pirate Stadium, 20-0 to zero if you're just joining us. Pirates scored quick on the first play and the second play of their second drive and then again on their fourth drive. So Pirates looking good, moving the ball south to north here. They are currently first and 10 at the Hornet 47-yard line. Cole Benson, your quarterback. Blake Bookinger, your running back. Sam Barry and Cooper O'Connell, your wideouts. Family gathering in northern Illinois. Sue and Steve Myers from six, or home of Six Flags. As Bookinger up the middle, a large gain on first down. Nice run up the middle, made one cut left, and a 15-yard gain there for, for Blake. Running hard, running downhill, good to see. He'll stay in the game. Sam Barry's going to run the play in here. Nick Sellison can hear the fireworks from his apartment in Swamico. A great job by that O-line. That's Jake Buckner, Josh McDonald, Ethan Michaels, Austin Holton, and Jake Lindquist getting a really good push up front. Under eight minutes to go now. Left in the opening half. Bayport 20-0. Benson, three-step dropping left the whole way. Throws it on a comeback route where Barry came back inside. Yep. Pass was for a comeback on the outside. Yeah, little miscommunication there between quarterback and wide receiver. Barry had good separation there. He just turned in. Pass was out. They just some, that's a, uh, a route point that you work with Coach Greg Myers. That uh, Just a subtle thing you don't think about with a comeback. Usually yep. you turn around, ball's there. But are you turning around into it? Kind of like a pick and roll. Are you turning Yeah, the right way or the up? wrong way? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Here you got to be on the same page. Second and 10. Benson hands it off to Montgomery. Hesitates at the line of scrimmage. Gets inside the 25. Carrying a linebacker. Gain of 12 downhill. yards. It usually takes more than one defender to bring Tevin down, and in that case, he carried a guy about four yards before help came for the Hornets. It's another first down at the 20-yard line of the Hornets. Shout out to Zach Monti out there, listening to the broadcast from the nearby neighborhood. A couple of rivalry games today, Craig, that we didn't get to go over. Oh, yeah. North and South are playing. East and West are playing. It's the oldest rivalry in high school football, isn't it? The East-West game? No, East -West not game? even close. No? No. Nope. Sam Barry on the pitch. Barry trying the left side, cuts back, gets inside the 15, down near the 12. I think it's like a Baraboo or something has the longest rivalry. Yeah, now, Coach guess. Jameson chiming in. He says uh, quite a bit of speed from that number 33. Maybe he should run track. <laughs> now Blake's a baseball player. Yeah. First of all, you got to get away from with a little golf. I was going to say, got to get away from golf. If he could only play three sports, Coach Jameson, in uh, spring, we'd, we'd be honest. Okay, in spring, I was going <laughs> to say he plays football and basketball. Five sports total. Benson to Montgomery, trying the right side, and he needs to get to the ten. And he does, down to the nine. That'll be enough to move the sticks with 6.18 left here 
in quarter number two. Jeff Johnson on with us at halftime, girls golf coach. Just followed them along with the front nine from Royal Scott on Wednesday. Another regional championship for Jeff and the girls. Great job. Bookinger runs the play in here for the Pirates. First down and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Should be on the mat in the winter. Jason, is that for Bookie or is that uh, for Montgomery? I'm, ass I'm assuming Tevin's wrestling again, right? Should be. Bookie, shifty, bounces inside the five. Down to the four. Second and goal from the four coming up. Found one little seam there to get uh, gain of six yards there. will be second and four. Second and goal from the four here for the Pirates. Well, As he's got Tevin rumbles in here. I'm thinking he's probably going to get the ball here, Chris. Tell you what, Blake's got some work to do to catch up what Abby did just a, a few days ago with the deer. Oh, uh, yeah. My she, goodness. Uh, her claim to fame is she shot a buck before her brother Blake, so kudos to Abby <laughs> for doing that. That was cool. Montgomery is the tailback. He will get the give. Right side, untouched Never into the touched. end zone. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. And the fireworks go off once again. My dad is calling me right now, Chris, but oh. what he doesn't really realize is that I'm on the radio, and I, I have radio to, or whatever we're on, TV, radio, oh, internet to... broadcast. Sorry, Dad, I'll have to call you back later. Come on now. <laughs> or maybe I can call him at halftime. Four-yard run by Tevin. That would give him 10 touchdowns on the season for Big Tev. What it? Who I have in class right now. And time he, out, time out. He was a little. Uh, he had nine excited. before tonight. Oh, did he have two tonight already? He's already had two. Oh. Well, then he has 11 Mike. by my count. Wait, you and Mike are about as good at math as each other. Well, we make up for it in other areas. All right, so it's 27. So, uh. 27, so we did not go for the two to make it a nice round 28. 35 points gets you a running clock, so will we go for two on the next possession? Pulaski up on West to Pier, 14 to 0. Pulaski looking for a bounce back game after the Pirates knocked them off last week, 14 to 0. Five minutes. 14 seconds remain here in the first half of play as the Pirates get set to kick off to the Preble Hornets. Four minutes and 13 seconds on that drive. That went 64 yards. Results in a Tevin Montgomery touchdown. JoJo's basically been kicking these to about the one or two yard line consistently. We'll see if he can get one into the end zone here. Do you have to like do a Sharapova grunt to get it that little bit? Uh, yeah, maybe. I had a buddy who played ping pong doing that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Or the tennis player. Was it Monica Sellis? Azur oh, is going to pop this pop. one up over the line. It's going to take a hop inside the 15, where Willems will pick it up, advance it up near the 25. 5 10. Is left for Preble. As we have 5.05 now to go here in the first half. We remind you, can let Vandervest Harley-Davidson of Green Bay turn your two-wheel fantasy into a reality. Vandervest, a full-service destination dealership on Velp Avenue on the beautiful Duck Creek. You don't know how to ride? No problem. Vandervest Harley-Davidson is a fully accredited riding academy serving the Bay Area May through October. Visit them at vvhd.com to find out how to find your freedom. Tell you what, if you were going to get out for a ride, today would have been oof, great. <coughs> First and 10 Preble here on their own 25-yard line. Hornets under pressure, the quarterback is, and it's been all that, and then some for Torres. Incomplete. Yeah, JoJo again coming around the edge, giving Torres about two and a half seconds to get rid of that football. Route really couldn't develop on the outside in its second and ten. DePierre scores a touchdown with 15 seconds left in the half to cut it to 
Okay. I'm going to text Mr. Vency. Shotgun formation. Torres steps back, throws over the middle. Passes high. Looking for Becker on an inside over slant. Over the head of Becker. Pirates in good coverage. Mason Clark, your D-back, and Evan French, you keeping tabs on these receivers. They've gone to more of a running game, Chris. Kind of abandoned the run because I'm pretty sure they realize that uh, it's going to be tough to run through that interior line with Sawyer Stimson. Well, it was tough to run around Maseki. the outsides as well. Yeah, there's not a lot of places to go. Four Second quarter, 4.58 left in said quarter. Pirates by 27. Tight end to the right side of the line. Torres going to throw Oof. into the near side, and the sidearm toss will be out of the stretch of the intended wide receiver, Dabrowski. Yeah, a little quick out towards the near side, and again, just not a lot of time to sit back there and let that route develop. Throw is maybe a little premature and off the mark, and we are punting at 4th and 10 for Preble. Back to receive your, your duo of Frenchu and Corshane who, as we said before, haven't fair caught many of these punts. They're, they're catching them in traffic oh, and it paid off with, with a big return early in the game for Corshane. Talk about not fair catching punts, but letting punts bounce is what irritates me more. And it will be French to drop to knee and catch it at midfield. Bayport will start over at the Pirate Pete logo with 459. Something that slight irritation today when it was referred to as Pete the Pirate. Oh. It's uh, Pirate Pete. Kind of like it's Pete. not Bucky the Badger. It's Bucky Badger, right? Correct. Yeah. Got to get the verbiage correct. Yep. Just a little thing. Evan French, you may have wished he fair caught that ball as he was swarmed just as he caught it there. Offense takes the field. Montgomery is your tailback. Brider, your fullback. Cole Benson at quarterback. Cooper O'Connell and Sam Barry out wide to the near side. Good hole for Montgomery Tevin. up the middle inside the 40. Karen, a guy on his back inside the 35 30. Down to the 25. Cut the distance to the end zone in half in one carry. Rumbling, stumbling. Tevin Montgomery, he is just a load to bring down. Several defenders are hanging on, and he's just so powerful, Chris. Keeps those legs churning for a big gain for number three. Is he faster than Jaden? Ooh, I don't know. Jayden, we'll let Jaden text him. Jaden. Text me and then right now let us is. know. Yeah, for sure right now <laughs> Tevin's a little faster. <laughs> Those two boys are pretty competitive. It would be uh, interesting to see them in a 50-yard dash, that's for sure. 25-yard line. Well, Benson takes the snap. Play action looking backside for a post corner. Throws it up. It's going to be picked off. Underthrown football. It's picked out of the air. By Green Bay Preble's 35, Blaine Plazic. Yeah, that pass intended for Sam Barry towards the goal line and just underthrown. Falling into the hands of the uh, Preble defensive player. And Preble will take over, although they're in a tough spot here, Chris. Pinned deep at about the two yard line. And I'm sure we're going to try and be set, trying to send pressure here to maybe get a safety. You just had a 25-yard carry. I'm not questioning the play calling, but I'm wondering why they threw it. Yeah. Jaden Montgomery is reporting in that he is faster by a mile. Still, right now, today. Well. <laughs> <laughs> carry off the left side and back to the two, maybe up to the three by Jadon potter Kanyanta. Yeah, he says not currently. Jaden's speed is a little slowed at the moment. He'll come back faster and stronger than ever before. Pirates stop him for a half-yard gain, and they're looking at second and nine. Again, in dangerous territory, backed up very close to their goal line here. Scott Vinci confirms that the cross divisions games do not matter for conference championship purposes. So we're pulling for Pulaski when they play De Pere. Next week. Yep. 
Carry off the left side, trying to get out of the end zone, and I believe doing oh. so. Severson <laughs> for a tackle at the six inch line. Yep, they mark him down just outside the goal line. Several of the players were putting up the safety sign, but he maybe got out by four, five, six inches, it looks like, on that spot, and now third and 12 from the six inch line. And we'll see what they conjure up here. Something fast. This is going to be one of those quick sprint outs or. Under three minutes, clock is ticking before halftime. Preble not in great field position. David Torres is letting the back judge. Tommy Williams is counting, and we're going to have a delay of game. That's an interesting strategy. Well, it's only like a three-inch penalty, Chris. That is fair. Half the distance <laughs> to the goal. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hurt them too much. They're running on some different personnel here. Maybe they didn't like the play call, just, side, just decided to take the delay rather it than It does the turn out. down the uh, yards per penalty average. It does, yeah. Halftime homecoming performance, I believe, is an extended halftime. Again, we'll have Coach Jeff Johnson. Timeout Bayport with 2.19 till half. Interesting timeout there, Chris. Are they going to try and come up with some scheme to really put some pressure on here? Engage eight. Never works in Madden. <laughs> you are a Madden player. I know. I you? hate Madden. I, have, I do play NCAA football quite a bit. I have limited experience in the gaming department. Mm. Although I'm You're pretty not a good, snake player. I'm pretty good on the Wii on Tiger Woods. Oh, yeah, I've I've shot a few like 52s in, in Tiger Woods, the good easy is. edition though. Like I shot a 53 on uh, Tiger Woods, the master or the masters. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one I'm saying. Actually, I created Joe Baranchek on that game. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty decent on that. She is a pretty good golfer, yeah. Out there at North Dakota State, along with her brother Jed. Playing collegiate golf, living the dream. Here we go. Third two and 12 from the left in the half. Two-inch line. Preble just lost three yards on the delay of game penalty, or three inches on the delay of game penalty. Pressure up the middle, throw far side, throw it up for grabs, and Becker Great is going to go up for the catch, and it's knocked away between the hands by Evan French, a just great defensive play. There's no such thing as face guarding in college or high school, and Becker did a whale of a job to go up for it, but French, you were able to knock it down. Yeah, it looked like he was gonna come down with the catch, and French, who just comes in there and bats it out. Really good play from Evan, and a great toss from Torres on the money. But Evan French, who wins the battle, and now the punter is standing on the back edge of the end zone. Do we send a little heat here, Chris? I don't even think you need to send a little heat. Torres, it's a snap, moves forward, Oof. and somehow gets it off, but pressure from Stimson forces a wobbly punt. Bayport's going to let it go. Oh, jeez. A.J. Corshane walked past the punt at the 30. It's going to pick up 12 more yards. That is one of your pet peeves, isn't it? We saw, was it two weeks ago, what? They let a punt go, and it rolls an extra 26 yards. That Come was a 70-some yard yes, punt. Yes, it was a 76-yard punt that night. Chris Beatty from Jim. And Chris saying go Pirates. Zach Monty. Happens to be my neighbor. There. Oh. Bayport football, 2-0-1. Till half. All right, Pirates looking to get another score before we head into halftime here. 27-0 your score, Pirates. As we take over on the 42-yard line. Benson he gives it to Montgomery the right side. He's going to gain four yards before he even gets touched. And he tries to carry defender down inside the 35 to the 34. He picks up eight. Jake yep. Lindquist, your right tackle, still blocking 15 yards down the field while Tevin's rumbling. It takes big old linemen, athletic linemen, to get that sort of blocking downfield. Great job, Jake Lindquist. Fourteen nothing at half. Pulaski leads West to Pier. 
Second and two, Benson sprint right. And a ball that is tossed up to the moon as Benson loses it on the throw. Again, one of those plays, the quarterback should not be moving when he throws. You ha you sprint outs. Yeah, I should uh, be didn't the have passing a seat game set there, and uh, the wide receiver was running down the field, and the pass was thrown up in the air and about 10 yards behind him. So not sure what happened there. A little miscommunication as Bookinger runs the play in here. Third and two for Bayport. Three and two. Bookinger trying the right side, getting outside, cuts back at the 30, inside the 25, and the power back carries it down to the 22. A little bit of thunder and lightning from the Pirates. You beat them up with Tevin, and then you bring in the, the speedster and the cutter, Blake. For oh, I thought it was nice the other run. way. Ah, no, yeah. <laughs> One's coming in at about 225 pounds, the other 150 soaking wet. Well, I think that Coach Berna wants to get Tevin at 220 for the wrestling season. I don't think 225 would help. Yeah, he may have to cut a little weight. <clears throat> He's going to carry a D lineman inside the 15 to about the, rather, Again. to the 16 inside the 20. And a timeout with 51 seconds left. Big Jake Buckner. Great kid. Had him in class a couple years ago, blocking down the field. Not giving up on that block till he hears a whistle. Second and five for the Pirates. 51 seconds remain here in the first half. Timeout, Bayport. Apparently that's Bayport's second timeout. So they are down to one remaining. They need Tevin at 220. They said Blake can wrestle at 152. Uh, Blake wrestled when he was eight years of age. He, oh, gave, he? he gave that a try. And it uh, turns out he's a much better basketball player. Your brother is a really good wrestler, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. Wrestled in college at Stevens Point. All-American. Oh. <laughs> 51 seconds till half. 27-0. Benson on second and five. Gives it to Booking, or fakes it to Booking, or they're going to throw it up to him into the near side of the end zone. Caught in the end zone by two different players. Got it! It's going to be a touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Booking her to rip it away from the safety and coverage. What a play. Booking her slips through the line and goes for the halfback throwback to the corner of the end zone. The defender's there, and he just outmuscles him. Great play, 33. Now do they go for two to get that yes, running clock? Yes, I believe it, so. Ah, they got Nick Fit out there with the T. Oh, they do. Looks as though they're going to try and make this a 34-0 to zero ball game. Interesting. You know, I've thrown a lot of passes to Blake on this field ever since he was about five years old. So he's caught a few balls down there before. Buckner with the snap, pulled by Evan Frenchu and Nicholas Fit through the through uprights. uprights. 34 0. Nice drive put together there by the Pirates. A good mix of run and pass. One errant pass that I'm sure Cole will, when he looks at the film, will want back. But that last one was a beauty to get the Pirates up 34 to 0 as we approach halftime. Next week, we'll have volleyball on Thursday, home against De Pere, which I believe is senior night. And then we'll have football at Southwest, audio only. So there will be a stream on the YouTube and Facebook networks uh, for Voice of BP. However, it will be audio only with Bookie and Mike. Sounds like a great time. Harvey's wondering if he even knows that Blake caught that ball. If who knows? You know. Well, Coach well, Knutson, I'm in the booth. Kathy uh, said watching. she's impressed with Bookie's calm composure. It's 
not like uh, Mike. Kick return, far side. Quinn Pierner went out, of, went out of a game back in 16. And, uh, Ryan and, went in? And uh, no, when Brett was came in. Oh, Brett, Pier yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, now a, a disclaimer, <laughs> Brett is my son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike's been known to get a little excited here, here and there. About two plays a game we allow him. Okay, yeah. I think he exceeds that. I, re I recall very vividly the the conference championship pin by Drake Anderson, where I, I didn't know if Mike's heart rate was going to climb above 200 there. <laughs> one of the great calls of all time. 34 seconds till half. Three receivers to the near side, one to the left. Willems, the tailback. He is right next to the quarterback, David Torres. Torres takes the snap, pressure up the middle immediately, throw a comeback to Becker far side, and incomplete. Becker loses the ball to the turf, 29 seconds. Logan Lasecki breaking through that interior of the line, and right when Torres gets the ball, he sees number five barreling down with a head of steam right at him, has to throw the ball immediately. Great play, Lasecki. Boy, you got to pick your poison here. you got Gothier and JoJo on the edges. And you got Stimson and Lasecki inside. From the 23. Fake to Willems. <laughs> JoJo Azur. And Logan Lasecki. Now Bayport wants to take a timeout with 21 seconds left. Yeah, they try the left side, or the right side, excuse me, and just nowhere to absolutely go. Looked like Tommy Hall got in on that tackle as well. Good to see Tommy playing well over on the defensive side of the ball. Let's see, what do we have for updates? Standing room only in Sheboygan as North leads South 14 0 at half. I don't know who you would have taken in that one, North or South. Who's leading North? North is up 14 0. Yeah, I would have taken North, probably. You think so? What do we have on our stat sheet? Just based on recent oh, no, we history, don't even I have. feel like North had a little bit better teams. I really thought South was, back in 2019 when Bayport went to State, South was a win away from the playoffs. Oh. Third and 15. 21 seconds left before half. And content to hand it off to Willems. Taken down is Willems by Gothier. 16 seconds as Bayport want to take a timeout. I don't think we have any, Chris. They are out of timeouts. I definitely forgot to take it off the scoreboard. We'll take it right now on the scoreboard. No matter how I take it off. Coach it. Westerman doesn't like to save those. And yeah, no, that is halftime. First half, 34-0 as the teams head to the locker room. Great half of football, beautiful night. That is the half from Bayport. 34 nothing. Bayport leads Green Bay Preble here at homecoming 2021. Let's have a side, take a break. Girls golf coach Jeff Johnson with us here at the half. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Football. And Uzi's, voted Green Bay's best bar three years straight, is pumping out some serious fun. And hey, look at there, you're on the guest list. Live and local is how Anduzi's phenomenal live music every week. Time out. Have you been on the patio at Anduzi's? Full bar, full menu, full service. Inside or out, Anduzi's is ready for you to come hang out. And with four locations, I'm not seeing a viable excuse why we won't see you tonight. Anduzi Sports Club, Green Bay East, Green Bay West, Kimberly and Howard. Online at Anduzi's.com. So what makes Anduzi's so different? Come and find out. Synergy Sports Performance is your local athlete's training facility. We build for speed, agility, and physical strength to make them better on the field. And we build character to make them better off the field. Work out with us at SynergyFields.com. 
If a training run turns into a sprained ankle or spring yard work stresses out your shoulder, go to the acute injury clinic at orthopedic and sports medicine specialist. It's not urgent care. It's not the ER. It's the same day orthopedic care directly from an orthopedic physician and no appointment is needed. The acute injury clinic at OSMS is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Located at 2223 Lime Kiln Road in Green Bay. Learn more at osmsgb.com. Hey, let's be honest. You know how it is. If you're a sports fan, there is no such thing as too much sports information. Well, that's just one of the reasons to follow Voice of BP on Twitter. We're talking live tweeting every Bayport broadcast. Don't stop there. Like us on Facebook. Because when it comes to pirate sports, the more ways to get it, the better. Halftime from Bayport High School as Bayport has the lead 34-0 to zero over Green Bay Preble. And at the half, we are joined by the head coach of Bayport Girls Golf, Mr. Jeff Johnson, fresh off of two days ago, a regional championship. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. A, uh, first of all, state runner-up this past spring. Yeah, right. Um, you know, didn't play our normal season in the fall, uh, so we went to the spring. Um, so it's been a quick, you know, quick turnaround going from spring, and then a lot of these girls play in the summer right into our season in the fall. So here in a couple of weeks, we'll all kind of take a deep breath, you know, and relax for a little bit. But, yes, uh, state runner-up in the spring, um, uh, as far as we've ever gotten, of course, which, you know, we, that was the goal in mind going into that season. Um, limited to teams, but... Still the, t- the top two teams in the state were there, um, us and Middleton, and it was a great battle to the end. Yeah, that's kind of what you thought. Uh, obviously, you learn your fall season isn't happening, but people anticipated all along. You guys are pretty good, and Middleton was always, regardless of which season, Middleton was always going to be the other beast. Yeah, it actually had been a couple of years we had talked about it leading up to that. You know, we knew it was coming, and we knew they were going to be good. Yep. So, yeah, it was either fall or spring. You know, we were going to be ready to play, and we were, so... So uh, let's go back to that spring uh, two rounds at Black Wolf Run. Obviously, you end up losing by one stroke, which some people would say you'd rather lose by 10 because you have five golfers that ended up playing 36 holes, just one simple stroke. But the first day, you're down by, I think, 13, 14 strokes. So we were down 10 after the first day. Okay, 10. And I actually, um, you're calling the game with Craig. I texted him that morning. Um, and it said, if we shoot a 321 or better, we're going to be in it. Okay, and that's exactly what we shot sure. on the first day. Um, now, I didn't know they were going to shoot 311. Historically yeah, low right. 311. Yes, right. So they went really low. Um, so we were behind after the first day. And then, you know, started the second day. We were still behind. Couldn't make it up. We got it close. They pushed it back out. We got close. And we, you know, we lose by one, and it's but we were never ahead. Um, we r- picked up seven shots in the last two holes, and we knew we needed to, and the, I give credit to Joe and Avery for um, finishing the way that they did because I told them what they had to do, and they did it. And, you know, some girls could go the other way with that. Right. They definitely did not. They stepped up to the challenge. and um, So it, you're right, you could lose by one. Maybe it's easier to lose by more. I would say in this case, no, because we gave everything we had and did. we shot a really good score, and that's going to win it most years, so yeah. you got to give credit to them. For sure, absolutely. Now you look at, you can't compare because a spring versus a fall, it's totally different course conditions. Um, they actually didn't play a full 18 on day one in the fall season because of rain. Um, but, boy, the score that the girls put up would have competed with everybody in the state. Obviously Middleton, just one struck better, but you guys... Had everybody in the state played, I still think that's how it goes. I agree. I think we would have been the top two. I don't, Brookfield Central won in the fall, and they played well. Um, but we would have uh, definitely been right up there with Middleton in the fall, too. Jeff Johnson here, the girls' golf coach from Bayport High School. Joe Baranchek, three-time state champion, goes out when I was able to talk to her after the round. Obviously, we got to come down and be a part of the coverage um, at state. And she said to us... Um, she knew it was her last round going out, and she was going to start firing. <laughs> and she sure did. She did, yeah. She went out that last round. Um, wins by 11 strokes over second place, which is – obviously that helps the team too. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, but impressive. Uh, yeah, and if you compare it to her, her first state title and her second one, those are both one-shot victories, mm-hmm. right? So 
you know, tight coming down. She finished early the one, and we had to sit around and wait. You know, this is stress-free for her other than the team concept, um, you know, but for herself individually, yeah, she was a pretty stress-free coming down the stretch. So now she's at NDSU. She is. Golfing in the collegiate ranks. Now, just talk about golf, being able to coach somebody of that caliber and seeing how she works. Just a totally different breed. Mentally, she's just how she carries herself. Just an incredible young lady. Yeah, uh, um, and that was from day one. So when she was a freshman and came in, uh, I'll never forget we were at a meet down in Madison early in the year, uh, a big meet. Like, you know, like all the top teams in the state are there. We're going to try and be one of those teams here eventually, which we are now. But at the time, we weren't. Uh, she pulled it left into the into a little pond on a par four, and I was walking with her, and she took her drop, and she had a little tree on the left, and she would have to play a little hook to get it on, and she goes, I'm pretty sure I can still par from here. Well, what, she's just a freshman, right? right? She takes her drop, hooks it around the tree up on the green, makes a putt for par. <laughs> and I, that's when I knew. I'm like, okay, sure. this is different, right? Yep. This is a girl yeah. who has it, um, has the game, has the mental capacity to go ahead and shoot that kind of stuff. So, right. Um, and, you know, like a lot of these top girls, not only in our team but throughout the state, they have a swing coach. Yep. Um, you know, they're at a, or they're at a country club too or they've got dad who plays and they work with that. So I don't need to be another voice to change right. this or that. They're working right. on something. I'm there to see something and help them and say this is what you got going, this is what I see, we can do this or that. But, um, you know, that's the mental part a lot of right. times where you got to help them get through or course management, right? Yep. What, what club should you be hitting here? You know, what have you been doing lately? What's been going good? Stuff like that where you can talk them through that. Sure. Let's talk about that. Maybe Wednesday you walk up to, uh, we have a drive on number, let's see, what was it, four that go for Bronick that goes left short of a sand, but she's in the rough. What do you talk through in that instance? Say we got to go a club up because we're, but we got to keep it over the bunker. How, what's a conversation that you yeah, might have? I, usually we start with where do you want to leave it? Like yep. where do you want your next one to go? Um, and if you're ever in trouble, let's get out of trouble, right? Let's not get crazy and try and go through these two trees and all right. of a sudden it clips a branch and it, it skips somewhere. Now you're still in trouble and now we're looking at a seven or an eight instead of just a bogey or a double. Right. Um, so it's, okay, where do we want to go? All right. And then what yardage are you comfortable with going into the green from there? Right. Right. Like you, do you want to be 120 out? Do you want to be 150 out? Right. Because that depends on how far we want to hit or where we want to punch it and stuff like that. So, and every girl is different, right? So I have. Um, both the Baronic girls, they all, at 160, they call that yardage gross. Sure. So they don't want to hit it from there. So I'm okay, well, they don't leave us there. Like, let's get further, let's get closer to the hole so yep. we hit that club that you don't like. So, But everyone's different, so we have to try and right. figure out where they want to be. Yep. So, And it's funny, you know, most girls would say they want to be about 100 to 120 out. Joel would say she'd want to be about 170 out. Oh, it was really? Just, I, yeah, I mean, she wanted to be further out so she could hit those and stick them. It was yeah. really interesting. Okay. Now you have players like an Avery Dudra. Who conference player of the year this year? Yep. She's your number one. First team all state this past spring. She's somebody that can drive it a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Just she to can. be able to coach something like that. We were on hole number eight. Yep. And I think it was 304 to the pin. She hit it across the cart path just in front of the green. Yeah. You guys were on eight, and I was over on 10T, and word traveled fast over to me that sure. she just hit like one 280. Yes. And I, find, I just saw her a couple of holes later, and she's like, she was, oh, yeah, at least 280, she said. <laughs> so, um, uh, But, yeah, she can. And she she got a really good command of her driver right now, um, which is great for her because that's an advantage for her to hit it so far um, to put herself in good spots on holes. Monday, you have the sectional. Yep. That is in Wausau. Now, uh, for those of you that weren't with us on Wednesday and how things work. So there's the regional that was held by Green Bay Preble, and then there's a regional hold b held by De Pere, just depending on how, what teams were grouped in which one. The, De the uh, regional that we were at was hosted by Preble. It was all local teams, and then Wausau was there, and D.C. Everest were there. Right. And it just happens that Wausau is the host of the sectional. You're going to a course that you've never been to. Right. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. Um, it, you know, when you... A lot of times, like these last few years, all the regionals and sectionals have been here right. on courses we know. We've hosted yeah. a few You hosted of them. Brown yeah. County for sectional. Yeah, and I've hosted a couple of regionals. So, yeah. like, um, and I'll always put in for that because it's a nice advantage to host at your yeah. home course. So, uh, but not familiar with it. I guess the girls have played it once. Okay. Um, they went out there and uh, had a round, um, I guess. And then uh, we'll get a practice round on Sunday. Okay. Um, so, in a couple of days, we'll get a practice round Is over there. Is that always granted to you, that yep. option? Yep. Oh, so, okay. every team. 
we'll get sure. one either they can play tomorrow or Sunday. Okay. And then Monday we'll go out there and compete uh, at sectionals. So, yeah. Obviously, yeah, because Brown County, Avery's probably could golf that course in her sleep. Yeah. She knows, well, I want to be exactly like you mentioned, setting up shots. Well, if I go three wood off the tee here, that'll lead me exactly to my favorite iron in or however. Just such an advantage. Yeah, right. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Um, right. You just you know where you're going to be. You know where you're going to put it. You know what the greens can do. You yeah. know, like where different pins are and stuff. So, so it's it'd be nice to play there Sunday. Take some notes, some mental notes too, as we go around and about how things work. And Halftime here again with Jeff Johnson, girls golf coach for the Bayport Pirates. Let's compare now spring season to fall season. Obviously. The spring was actually incredible. Yeah. Normally, it could be extremely <laughs> yeah. wet. You didn't have many issues lucky. at all. Yeah. And now, it's 82 today, right? Oh, it's crazy. Incredible. Normally, it could be getting pretty cold. By the time you get to state, it could be pretty cold when you get to U Ridge. Yeah, it's that. It's always that in between, right? Mm -hmm. That 10th to 12th of October. Right. Um, and I, of course, I looked ahead at the 10 day and <laughs> down in Madison already. It's yep. it's a, on that first day right now. It's 70. Okay. So I don't. It might change, but it's probably not going to change to like 50s or right. to 80. So it'd be somewhere in there. I would think it'd be great. I remember one year we had uh, the practice round Sunday was jackets, pants, oh. hats, gloves, and everything, and the next day was shorts and sure. polos. The next two days, so it's just right. It's hit and miss at this time of year. So. But we're going to enjoy what we have right now, and um, hopefully, sure. if it's October 13th and it wants to start cooling off, go for it. Usually, so. it's if it's cold, I'm not even going out to the course. How do you handle that? Do they golf specifically with extra things on, and does that affect, oh, shoot, we got a club up here or anything? It might affect if you need to club up and stuff. They now make uh, golf gloves that are for rain and okay. for winter. Like, so it's so not just wearing the one grip. on your yeah. dominant area. Um, not everybody wears them and things like that, but... Uh, they do have that, so sure. but it's just you know making sure you have the proper layers that you're comfortable swinging and being able to move around. You know, it's not you can't have a heavy jacket on if you're not going to be able to get around. That's not going right. to help you. Did you like the state being at Black Wolf Run? Would you like a rotation? You were at U Ridge your, the first few years yep. with the team there. Uh, <laughs> Black Wolf was great. I thought it was a, a good host. Yep. Um, it's a beautiful course, yes. sort of, but so is U Ridge um, and whatever. I just think there's something about in most sports, when you go to state, right. you go to Madison. We're going to the call center, right? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, um, I, I just think, I think you would miss that part if it if it wasn't there. Sure. Now, a rotation wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I think the boys in the spring are back at Black Wolf Run. I believe the boys in the spring are at Black Wolf Run. Golf, are you guys back in the spring? Yeah, but for a state meet. We don't know that yet. I, I thought I heard the boys were back there this oh, year. So. Okay. But I would be, if they did a rotation, that'd be okay. Because they were in the Dells, I think. Uh, in they were last season, year in the Dells. Yeah. So um, I know I wouldn't want it up here because you missed that part of going to state. Right. You know, right. you don't want to sleep in your own bed. You want to go have have a good time. Sure. Okay. Yep. You go out right now. So you're, you, can, you can't hit it as far as Avery, or can you? No, I cannot. No? Well, okay. I can't hit it 280 like that. But, sure. Um, I mean, I can get to her sometimes. Too. If she drives it straight, that doesn't. Yes. That's not always the case, but I can drive it straighter than she can, that's for sure. sure. But okay. she can drive it further if she gets a hold of it. Best sure. irons on the team, who's got that? Probably Abby. Um, she just She's solid, straight through. She's got the straightest ball flight I've had of my six years I've been here for a person. Just hits it straight, right off the face every time. She landed irons. it on six. Uh, I think that's the par three on the back uh, oh. section, right? Yep. And uh, she hit it. Right there, just sticks. Yeah. Really nice iron shot. Yep, fun to watch her do that. Uh, best putter? Uh, whew, man, we practiced a lot of putting today, so sure. that's a hard answer for me to give you right now. What, tell me what, what's practicing putting then. What, yeah. what are we aiming for? Are we aiming for dimes? Are we trying to keep it straight? How, reading? What, what's the Yeah, practice? so I, I guess, look, if I uh, just today what we did, we, spent, we started with it. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, three footers. They've got to make like 10 consecutive three footers sure. on sure. four different holes on each side, so that's like eight, 80 putts in a row, really, yep. if you think about it. Um, some of them are uphill, some of them are down, some are a little left to right, right to left. Like, you're going to get them all, but you got to make sure those little ones go in, right? right. Um, and then we practice some leg putting, you know, up the hill, get it there, so it's it's in two strokes instead of three, right? It's such a big difference right. if you do that two or three times during your round, that's three or four yep. shots, right? So that helps a lot. So, um, but just, you know, and, and doing some competitive stuff with each other, um, helps to get them focused instead of just dropping balls and putting right. mindlessly. Like the second hell, you, yeah, uh, you get to lose your basically your full, I don't know, not yeah. natural 
how you're going to be swinging. Yep. And really, practicing putting is boring. Right. So you have to think of something to keep them moving. And like, I put on some music today, and like, yep. let's you know, let's let's have a good time, and but let's also work Absolutely. at it. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Well, best of luck on Monday. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, we'll be at. You, you'll have uh, University Ridge with a sectional. Notre Dame and you, I assume, are the two favorites. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, the other, coming out of the other regional, Kakana was at a 356. Okay. And Notre Dame was 336. So that's. But it, you never know what can happen. But right. you would think yep. um, us two, it should be the ones that would have an advantage, probably. Awesome. So. Um, Oh, I do want to say, too, that I got a lot of feedback from parents and stuff about when you guys are on the course this spring or this fall, they love it. It's great. Perfect. You guys awesome. do an awesome job with that and with this call and all the other sports, too. But they like to have you out. I like to have you out there as well. So cool. I yeah, appreciate it's, that. Uh, it's been fun. We obviously, but Mike and I did a round in 2017 out in Seymour. And, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, we can, we can do this. Um, obviously, we learned a lot from that one, too. Not just hearing Mike and I walk and breathe and everything and fill time, but uh, Mark Worzinger is able to go with yeah, me. Yeah, cool. Good um, to see him. Have some knowledge. It was fun, and uh, it was a blast. And yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, uh, too. The girls, to be able to share their success with everybody, too. Not just, all of a sudden I read the tweet, oh, they yeah. put girls won golf today. Right. Actually, and it's, uh, it's unique, obviously. It's during the day, so yep. you can't have all of this come right. out and watch them play Correct. and stuff. So you, you want to get them any sort of coverage or any publicity that you can in, in any way so that people hear about it. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. So, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Girls Golf Coach, Jeff Johnson, uh, the state runner-up. Mayport Girls Golf Team heads into the sectional this Monday. We'll step aside, take a quick break. Halftime is complete. We'll start the second half in a bit. You'll listen to Mayport Pirate Football. Synergy Sports Performance is your local athlete's training facility. We build for speed, agility, and physical strength to make them better on the field. And we build character to make them better off the field. Work out with us at SynergyFields.com. Do you have spirit wear to support your team? Do you have apparel to let everybody know who you work for? Team Apparel has you covered. Team Apparel is a leader in screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, trophies, plaques, and awards. With its in-house production, Team Apparel provides fast, quality service at a great price. Let Team Apparel work for you in promoting your business and organization. Visit Team Apparel at North Military Avenue, Green Bay, or at TeamApparel.com. At Team Apparel, quality is what we sell you. Service is what we give you. Townline Pub & Grill. Looking for a place to grab some food? Stop at Townline. Taste the mouth-watering burgers, gourmet pizza, and endless appetizers. Offering a casual atmosphere and a lively feel. Why not stop in on the way to the game? Grab a bite to eat after the game, too. A night out, a group gathering after a sporting event, or even a birthday. We want to thank you for your patronage. Townline, where the people come for the food and stay for the fun. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Sports on NEW Sports Radio at newsportsradio.com. Let's start the second half as you see some halftime stats there. Are you ready? Let's get loud. Bayport in total control, and they're going to receive. The kickoff here for the third, and it will be a return near side. A.J. Corshane across midfield. Just a couple to beat, cuts back oh. at the 30, and he's taken down. A nice open field tackle at the 27, first and 10 Bayport Pirates. Bayport felt like that was a, an area they could kind of exploit coming in, looking at some film, and opened up a big spot for A.J. to run through there all the way down. To the Preble 27 yard line as the Pirates take over 34 to 0. At halftime, Chris, I got a chance to get out and get a little fresh air, and there are so many people here around the fence all the I way to that. concessions. It is about six people deep. Not so. As That's the Pirates cool take over. Oh, it's fantastic. First and 10. I don't know if people were aware of the coming. Weather on Friday at Pulaski. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure it was going to be to that extent. I well, didn't expect I, uh, that. I was keeping an eye on the radar, um, so but I knew. I will always say it. Pulaski turns out like a community like no other. The they student do. section was unbelievable. That atmosphere is really cool. This is pushing limits for a home crowd. For sure. That I have not seen before at Bayport. Now, we've had one or two that have rivaled this. Obviously, it would help if uh, across the way we could match that. Mm -hmm. um, 
where we've seen, well, the Kimberly game in level three was unbelievable. The Alec versus James Morgan game. Oh, yeah. Run up the middle by Cole Benson. That'll be enough on second and two to pick up the first down, down to the 13-yard line. Cole's probably enjoying a, a lighter workload tonight than normal. He's been carrying the football 20-plus times in a lot of these games. Getting bruised up as Bookinger runs in the play here. It'll be first and 10 on the 15. Feel free to tweet the booth and let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you today. Kathy Bidden with mom and company up in Eagle River. Bookinger trying the right side. Splits defenders. Gets down to the five-yard line, does little Blake. Shifty, tough to tackle. Gain of about nine and a half there on first down. Is football his favorite sport? Not favorite it, sport? Oh, gosh. It's, it is in it's, the fall. It's, it definitely is in the <laughs> fall. He's uh, He really enjoys the season he's playing in, whether it's basketball, <laughs> baseball. But, yeah, if you asked him right now, he probably would say football. He's having an absolute blast. Here comes Big Tevin, I think. Tev off, off the, the left side. Stutters around a guy. Spins off a guy. Gets to the touchdown. goal line. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Pirates will put up six, and we will have a running clock the rest of the way. 10.06 left in the third. I got to say, the fireworks are on point tonight. Do they have enough? Do Remember they the have first enough? time they did the fireworks show? I recall Mr. Chambers purchasing uh, enough fireworks for eight touchdowns one game, and we ended up scoring nine touchdowns. So we, yes. had, a, we had a silent last touchdown. Hard to plan for these things. You got to order more because that's just a post-game celebration, right? You just save them then. Absolutely. If there's some left over at the end, they just all go off at the mm -hmm. finish. Nick fit on for your extra point. And Nick threw the uprights Kick just up. inside the left. That's good. It is 41-0. We did not have an Evan French who holding. That's Ethan Hool on the hold. Puts it oh. down and fit right through the uprights. 41-0. Student section was going crazy there with all their halftime antics. Good to see the spirit. Good to see the Pirate Nation coming out tonight. Ten oh six. Chris is keeping Twitter Nation updated here. You need another Chris Learman to do everything you do. You got a lot going on. You do. We have a lot more people here. That takes the listenership down. We were over uh, 2,400 different devices tuned in last week. How many do we got tonight? I can't find that out until after we go off air. But we... Uh, we That's had amazing. A, we had a party last week as this kickoff is going to be called back. We had a party last week with people texting. Well, obviously, the rain kept people away. That helps for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people, uh, I heard of a few people who were even driving out there to Pulaski and then uh, got around. into the rain, looked at Sorry. the radar, and said, you know what? I think we should turn around and take in the uh, broadcast. You know, the uh, road camera footage isn't quite like what we have from the huddle cam, but um, Otis had umpteen text messages in, the tweets that come in, and we try to... Uh, well, Otis is kind of a celebrity. Well, <coughs> more than kind of. They got Nick Fit kicking off here for the second time, replacing JoJo. And Nick will send a ball down into the corner that we fielded by Willems, and it takes it across the 20, 25 be the 26. Starting defense is going back out with 9.57 to go in the third. It will be a running clock on all things except for touch or timeouts and scores. Yep. So this should go rather quickly. Quickly. 
Nine o'clock finish is not out of the question. Well, yeah, that is out of the question, but 9.30 should be home, Craig. Well, that's good. I got somebody texting me that says, shouldn't the clock be running? Uh, yes, and it is. It is. Snap to quarterback and handoff. Judon Potter Kanyanta. Potter Kanyanta is a hyphenated last name. I wonder yeah. if he goes by anything shorter than that. That's a Jadon. We could just take over the first name. We could. Might make it easier. We always talk to the Bayport players or about them as a first name basis. Correct. So next week, um, do you take play by play duties or does Mike try to steal them away? Because he is a color, right? He is the color. He man. is lots of color, but he's also a great play-by-play, -play, so he'll probably do play-by-play. -play and and color. And, and <laughs> color, and I'll just be there. Which is typically what my Friday night with him is. <laughs> Swing pass to the near side and a completion. Very nice play out to Quentin Ramsey. That might be their biggest play from scrimmage. I think that one pass. Play. Oh, yeah, they had one for 18 earlier. That's a gain of 12 for a first down taken down by Landon Goth here. Let me know if uh, here's the first half stats. I don't know if you saw them at all. First half stats. Primal led the turnover battle 1-0. They did. Bayport, 20, 227 positive yards of offense, while Preble is in the negative category at negative 38. First and 10, Preble. And the rush game for Preble was negative 54 yards. Oof. John Krause has it dialed up a bit. Pitch to the near side, throw a halfback pass. Throw to the near side, Severson going for Ooh. a pick. And it's going to be deflected in the backfield, and Landon Gothier gets a hand on it to not allow a throw down the field. Great Mike, you're looking at the, uh, the people connected to the YouTube stream you're watching. There are two YouTube streams. We stream this on the football YouTube stream, the Voice of BP YouTube stream, and the Facebook stream for Voice of BP. We're streaming all over the place here, yeah. Chris. Try to give people options of where or how to get connected to us. Chris and Mike on a Friday, or Chris and Craig tonight on a Friday evening from Bayport. It's homecoming. Seven minutes in rolling. Running clock with 41 to nothing. Play action. Throw in the backfield, and there's going to be a rough in the Ooh. passer. As I think we had a helmet to helmet by JoJo Azur. Torres was hurried but overthrew the intended receiver, Christian Rady. Had some room if, if the pass is on target to potentially pick up a first down there. And Torres is a little shaken up here and we're gonna get a 15 yard penalty on the Pirates which is going to move them past midfield into the Pirate territory for the first time tonight. Minor, you can combine the flavors of Italy with the heart of the Irish. Add some Chicago flair, and you've got Gallagher's Pizza. For the best Chicago style north of the Illinois border, Gallagher's Pizza is your destination. Call now for delivery or pickup in Green Bay and Pier. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, and Irish spirit. 15-yard penalty on the uh, play that's called helmet-to-helmet -helmet personal foul penalty. Head contact. And that will move the Hornets to the Bayport 47-yard line. Clock is stopped with the timeout taken by the officials. We never reset the timeouts, nor did Michael Plummer on the clock. Should we inform Mr. Plummer of that? Get the timeout situation squared away on the clock. First and 10 Preble at the Pirate 47. Different quarterback has entered the game for Preble. It's number seven, Christian Rady, and he hands off. <clears throat> Do you want to get ready with the play-by-play -play tonight? You want to break that in the rest of the way? I don't know, Chris. You're well, so, it you're is so Rady, too. It. That's totally different. Yeah. I don't. I don't necessarily have to call every single play, especially when we can kind of go into Euchre mode <laughs> um, because we have the video next week. Although Mike won't, you kind of have to call every play because <laughs> radio, they're literally depending on you. Correct. <laughs> don't get the visual aid here. 
Second down and 10. So after the uh, penalty and the hit on the quarterback, Torres is out, and they move the tight end, Christian Rady, from tight end to quarterback. Brings up about a third and two here. Treble quick to the line as Pirate Stadium gets loud on this third and two. Shotgun formation, Rady back. Third and one. Hand off left side and a rushing first down for Green Bay Preble. Jadon with the carry to the left side and he gets it up. Shifty quick back there, makes one really good cut, gets the first down for Preble. Ooh, a nail biter at Green Bay West. 7-7 seven, seven in the third. Ooh, defensive battle. Who are you taking on that one? I will take I'm gonna take East. East. 116th edition. That's incredible. I wasn't alive 116 years ago. I was not either, Chris. <laughs> oh, Throw far side, nearly, nearly intercepted by Gavin Severson. Gavin Severson had his hands on it, and he's looking up to the sky, wondering how didn't I hang on to that great pressure brought by the defensive front of the Pirates. Quarterback over the middle. Had to get rid of it earlier than he wanted to. I think 29 is going to be sent out and maybe for the rest of the game. As number 27, Caleb Clark comes in for and the up, Pirates. He's bleeding on his forearm. So Joe Joe Azur is sent to the sideline. Meeting with the training staff. Tyler's going to wrap him up nicely. Second and 10. Ball to 35 of the Pirates. Maybe 36. I think 36. It's a 36, yeah. Throw near side and a completion on the out to Baske. And Dabraski with the grab down to the 30, a gain of six. Let's check in if we can find an update from Southwest. Lance Learman listening out there in Osmond. First time we've had a chance to see Number seven, Rady toss it. Nice toss out into the flat for a gain of six, but they run him off the field. And I'm guessing that means Torres is back in. Let's see what we've got here coming out of the huddle. Wow. He is. Mike says it's the A team next week. The A team. I thought the A team was last week with <laughs> Otis. <laughs> Press coverage across the board, pressure from the far side, Oof. throw a quick slant to the tight end and then out of the hands. Of the intended Sam Peterson. Sam Peterson, your intended. Big target there, right through yeah, the Yeah, I like that look, actually, for Green Bay Preble to go to the tight end there. 6'7", 230. That is a large high school football player. 6'7". Plays D-line and O-line. Fourth and four. They need the 26 to the Hornets. They have it at the 30. Under two and a half minutes till the end of the third in a 41-0 ball game. Southwest is down 34 to 7 to Ashwabadon. Oof. There is your update. Thanks, Nick Sellison. Mike, we may need some things to talk about next week during the running clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Pull it down oh. and a rushing first down after pulling it down. Nice, nice move run by, by David Torres. Torres. Looked like the intention was to pass. With nobody open, he t t tucks it down and. Works his way up for a first down. Nice play by Torres, and the ball is now at the 18-yard line of the Pirates. Pirates' defense needs to uh, get a stop here, preserve this shutout, 41-0. They have as more first downs this drive than they had of two in the first half. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Receiver left and right inside the red zone. Pitch back, it's going to be a halfback pass or tight end pass. Throw over the middle into the end Ooh. zone. And That's again. another one for Mr. Gavin Severson. Becker are going to be. On the, trying to get the pass, collides with Severson. And 
He have jammed his finger or hurt himself. 13 is going to run off. Is that why Gavin plays defense? <laughs> he used to be a running back. One he of did, them was a did. running I back. Think it was Both Gavin. of the Severson twins were running backs. <clears throat> Shout out to Nate Rickle out there listening. Yeah, they have off tonight. Rickle's also one of the A-team members on the broadcast crew. Well, we can't just be handing that to the captain seat to everybody. Okay. He's got to be top five, right? Well, how many are there? Four? Five. Me, There's five you, of Mike, us. Otis, and yeah. Rickle. Top five for sure. <laughs> I'd put myself in that same category. <laughs> Pitch left side. Ooh. Bayport trying to make a TFL, and they will get a tackle for loss. Landon, Landon Gothier. Gothier. And that will end the third quarter from Bayport. 41-0. to zero. Pirates have the lead after three. Listen to Bayport Pirate football. If a training run turns into a sprained ankle or spring yard work stresses out your shoulder, go to the Acute Injury Clinic at Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Specialist. It's not urgent care. It's not the ER. It's the same-day orthopedic care directly from an orthopedic physician, and no appointment is needed. The Acute Injury Clinic at OSMS is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., located at 2223 Lime Kiln Road in Green Bay. Learn more at osmsgb.com. Zesty's Frozen Custard and Grill. Zesty's serving up a full food and frozen custard menu. Now open right across from Bayport High School at 2639 Lineville Road. Offering a different flavor of the day, each day 11 until 9. Try their weekly special baskets or enjoy some of Zesty's awesome, fresh, frozen custard. Zesty's Frozen Custard and Grill. The finest frozen custard in town. Fourth quarter from... Bayport High School, homecoming 2021, 41-0. <laughs> Mike's just making group <laughs> chats galore tonight. <laughs> How many group chats can be started? Oh, my goodness. Well, he's got three going. Right, Jeff he's with the one. Oh, goodness. Mike, you're just shy of 50 texts on the night. I think he, we did. I think we're at the, over that. Chris and I may have put a slight wager. The over on under the over was 21 under. and a half. <laughs> that was surpassed that first first half of the yeah. first quarter. <laughs> 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 oh, good stuff. Love it. Third and 13. Bayport defense to rise to the occasion with 41 nothing lead. David Torres takes the snap. Throw to the far side flat. Open field tackle is going to have to be made by Severson. He does. It is going to be a gain of about seven. Brings up fourth and seven. And yeah, the Preble running clock. Very likely to go for it here. Trying to get a touchdown on the board. Nice little play. Nice little out route. Fourth down and seven upcoming. Can the Pirates get a stop? Turn it over to the offense. Fourteen yard line and the Hornets need the eight. Market fourth and six. Tor was in the pistol now. Shift to the shotgun. David takes the snap, looking right. Under pressure, throws a comeback route along the sideline. Into the five inside the one, taken down inside the goal line. There's that comeback route that we have seen probably yeah. run a lot tonight. It was right in front of the official, right along the sideline. Executed really well. Uh, sprint out and just stopped. The defender's momentum just carried him a couple yards past. Pass was on the money, turns it upfield, and they are at the one-yard line. Tyler Bix says, Mike, feel better. Tyler, give Mike a call right now. There you go. Tell him in person. <laughs> I think Preble's going to go under center and sneak. try to sneak it, and they are going to be stopped at the goal line. The halfback cannot push. That's a 15-yard penalty in high school football. He came in and pushed to try to get him over the goal line. Let's go, Mr. Senecal. In college and pros, it's not a penalty. But in high school, it is still a 15-yard penalty. Now, if you hand the ball off to a running back, can the quarterback then push? No, nope, you cannot assist a runner. Got you it. can block the guy who is blocking, so technically come up and push the guard. But gotcha, but not the offensive player. You cannot have uh, aid the ball carrier. Gotcha. So gain of nothing. 
And it'll be second and goal from the one foot line. Now we're gonna go Preble with the Wildcat. Three full backs to the right, and it's a sprint to the right, Torres looking to pass, throw it back of the end zone, and Preble is out the back of the out. end zone. Incomplete. Preble student section going wild, <laughs> but he's out of bounds. Third down. Interesting play call there with only a foot to go. They opt to throw it, and now we're at third and a foot. Yeah, I think. We're not rocking this boat. We're not rocking the boat. Now we're rocking the boat. Parents are getting stompy with the feet here. Sprint Same play. Right with Torres looking for the flat. Throw one towards the goal line. Knocked away Mason Clark. Fourth and goal from yes, less than a yard away. They sprint, they sprint out again. Pass the ball for one foot. And now we're at fourth down. Well, the sneak didn't work. Tom Brady gets a one-yard sneak every time. Every time. The pass Nobody else work. can. What are they going to do here? Fourth and goal. I'm going to say they're going to run it. Same formation as the previous two plays, which were Inside both Inside handoff goals. counter? Maybe. Or a quarterback keeper. Torres takes a snap, sprint right, looking oh, throw back wow. left. He's got it, going to tuck it, get to the goal line, got into it. the end zone. Touchdown, Preble Hornets. I couldn't tell which defender left his feet, but if the defender doesn't jump, he probably sacks him there for a loss of eight or nine. See, this is just a good DJ with the song selection. Give mm -hmm. him, goes around, comes back around. <laughs> 41 to six as Preble sets up for Clock the Clock stops point. at 7.48. Nope. Still running. Nick Becker, your kicker, and it's blocked and then caught. He caught it. <laughs> Mason Clark blocked the punt and caught it. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. <laughs> he kicked it right. He actually might have taken it off him. the hold. <laughs> oh, I think he kicked it. I do too, but wow. That's crazy. Oh, my. All right, so that was interesting. 41-6, if you're wondering, if it gets to 35, no matter the situation, yep. it will keep running Continues no matter what. To run. So it, even if they would have gotten it there to 34. That may never happen again. Because when you go to block an extra point, usually you're laid out and you're Typically. just trying to get a hand on it. Somehow Mason just caught that extra point right in his chest and stopped and handed the ball to the official. <laughs> All right, return crew is back for this kickoff. A couple other faces out there. Number 38, Hunter Akilski, a sophomore, back deep. Along with Peyton Lonachek. Is that Jaguar, the main man? And I'm trying to get a number on the main guy. 22, Brett Shipley. So a couple other guys getting an opportunity here on kickoff return. We don't squib it or onside it here, do we? If we're Preble, we don't. I don't think. Nope. We do. Oh, it's squib, a squib it's right. picked up by number 25, Aiden Beth. And he's going to bounce it outside. Oof. <laughs> Ethan Hool coming off the field, <laughs> excited about the effort by Aiden Beth. And Coach, Aiden, it's blocked again. Aiden Beth, like, <laughs> like any fullback, doesn't try to avoid the contact, but rather tries to run through the defender, yeah. and it will be pirate ball. Is that Grisbowski uh, running the ball? You're right, on their own 46. <laughs> Looks like some second team O in there now for the Pirates. <clears throat> Brett Shipley out there at wide out. Jackson Jaguar. And Ethan Shiro. So we have Carter Callies 
Flag's going to fly. Is that one of those holds? Is Carter in at quarterback? Yes. Fantastic. Carter Kalisa, sophomore. Rassler. Rassler. Pretty darn good Rassler. Yeah, Barsley was a freshman last year. Man's the uh, quarterback duties on the JV Scott squad. And Tyler Plummer enters the game. He's likely going to line up at tight end or fullback. Ty Plummer also a sophomore, 6-foot, 170-pounder. <laughs> Our clock operator is Michael Plummer. His son just entered the game, so he forgot to start the clock. Now we're good to go. <clears throat> as he is lined up at the fullback position. Jackson, Jaguar, your tailback, and he'll get the ball. Right side, bounces it out, makes a cut. One man to beat. Great run, Jackson, Jaguar for 21. <clears throat> to the midfield stripe with six minutes to go. Mark texted me Chester Marcos. I don't know who Chester. Second and Chester six Markle after the hold. Maybe had a block down. like a punt like that or what he was referring to or the kick. Jaguar trying to carry a defensive lineman. Tackle made by 67. Dante Lemerand. 6'2", 280 pound D lineman for Preble. Third and two and a half. Shipley wide right. <laughs> nice carry right side for Jackson Jaguar. First down, Bayport down to the 36. Nice run by Jackson off the right side. As Bayport subbing in. A bunch of guys. Got Dante Dragicchio out there, number 79. He comes in at six foot four, 280 pounds, and he's a wow. backup for the varsity squad. That is the size of his sisters combined, I think. <laughs> he is a big boy. Natalia and Sophia. Oh. Perhaps the two of the nicest, most smiley people I've ever seen. Absolutely. Uh, I saw Sophia, I think it was, uh, got knocked down uh, at, in a basketball game. She got <laughs> screened, hit her nose, and she was smiling on her way to the bench. <laughs> and uh, Katie Coleman's like, self, just get hit in the nose. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Number 20, Eli Crone in the ball game at tailback. Kelly's. And he'll get the carry. Give it to Crone, right side, inside the 30, 25, and out of bounds. Good. Rep by Elijah Crone, the junior. Nice run by Eli, bouncing that run outside. Sees a little space, turns on the Jets, and a big pickup for the Pirates. As the clock continues to roll, we are at 4 minutes 30 seconds. Pirates driving down to the Preble 22-yard line. Carter Calise, your quarterback. Nope, now they oh, switched it. Correction on that. Ivan Robles Nunez. Yeah, Ivan's in there, number four. They literally just switched that play, right? Yeah. Now 34 is going to go back in. Are they running plays in with the quarterback here? He just put his helmet back on. He right. went up to Coach Westerman. but Second down in 13. Ivan takes a snap, hands it off to Crow on the right side, trying to carry a man. And 67's made a couple of tackles for Preble. Lemerand is going to stop Lemeron. the ball carry at the 25. It'll be third and 13. They need the 13, maybe the 12. Mr. Motts is walking by a friend. <coughs> Yeah, lots of company down there for Mr. Motts. He's just making sure that, you know, nobody rushes the field down in that corner. Crone trying the right side inside the 15 down to the 12. That's going to be enough to move the 
sticks. Oh, no, sorry. Five yards off. 17. You're looking at the wrong stick, Chris. I am. I'm looking at the uh, the sticks on the far side are inside the 15. I was looking at the other the five-yard line difference. They need five yards yet. A couple other guys in the game here. Number 70, Charles Lawson, a sophomore. He's a good-looking old lineman. Eli Crone bounces it outside. He's got room. To the 10, to the 5, and to the end zone. Touchdown, Bayport Pirates. Elijah Crone, 17 yards. That's another kid who's going to have a smile so wide after that. One of the nicest kids around. He's stoked running back to the line. <laughs> a lot of his teammates are pumped up for Eli. Good for him, and it's 47 to 6 as that clock has stopped with the score. And we got Ethan Hool on to grab this snap, and Nick Fit to kick the extra. Uh oh. East takes a lead with 9.02 left. 13 7. As we predicted. And we're going to have a bad snap. Ethan's going to run. He's going to throw. Lefty throw to the end zone. It's going to be it's completed. It's two-point conversion. Diving grab by, is that Breyer? Nope. That's Severson, Severson he again. He caught one. one. <laughs> How about it? He dropped a couple potential interceptions earlier in the game, and we had a botch snap and hold, and Ethan Hull with a jump pass. That looked Tim, Tim Tebow-like there. Lefty across his body, yep. jumping up. Wait, what? Does he wear? He wears, um, no, no, not the same number, but I don't remember thrower. what number Tebow was. Fifteen. Ethan Hool with the jump pass. You don't know what number he was. I, he was I one wasn't of, a huge Tim Tebow guy. He's still one of best college football players of all time. Oh, for sure. Unbelievable. College Couple national player. championships at Florida. Did he have two or did he have three? Two. At least, yeah, two, I think, only. only. And then he tried to play tight end this, this past season. That didn't work out for him. No. So he won more playoff games on that one play with the Broncos that year than the Packers did that season. Oh, yeah, I remember that. But a college football, well, not all players are very good in the pros. He's Correct. A, Sometimes good. the game doesn't transfer. Two-point conversion is good. Is good. Diving play by Gavin. 49 to 6. Couldn't make the two interceptions, but he made that grab. Well, that one was for points. <laughs> <laughs> 2.38 to go and a line drive kick. We'll take a hop inside the 15 off a hop. Ooh. It'll be fielded by Bain Plazic. Carter Kalis on the tackle, hustling down. Take down for two. Plaza had the interception earlier. That appeared to be a double leg takedown. Coach Hansen would have been proud of that tackle. Sure. Speaking shoot. of which, usually you hear Coach have Hansen. Not heard him. Maybe he had too many bratwurst at the uh, 50 year celebration. I don't know. I think he generally eats kale. He's typically right in this vicinity, I believe. He May eats also. kale smoothies, yeah. not brats. Healthy guy, that, that Coach Hansen. Well, that's what he likes to think. Well. He looks the part. Strong fella. Not bad for 62. <laughs> Snap pressure in the backfield and a sack for the Bayport defense. And a sack is going to be recorded by 76. The big man gets home, Caden Lewis. Caden Lewis. Caden Lewis. Lewis is 6'1", 260 on the inside there. Number 40, Luke Frenchu. Luke, I'm assuming that's brother, right? That is brother, a sophomore to his older brother, Evan, both playing the same position. Evan's Offsides. slightly taller than Luke currently, but I have a hunch Luke's going to catch up at some point. Evan's going to be what, 6'2", 6'3"? Evan is listed as 6'4". Now is. would you say he's 6'4"? I don't think they've added the standard one inch to like the, the height the on the program. Well, no, I think uh, in, on the roster, the kids write it down there. So Westy doesn't care. The kids write down their own info. Well, let's see what Blake is here. Blake's coming in at five foot nine. Completion on the far sideline. He's accurate. From Christian Rady. Blake is accurate? Yeah. He must not have fibbed. 
on his height. It does depend on his hair. If the poof is there, he's for sure 5'10". If the poof is there. <laughs> <laughs> if he borrows Lisa's bump it. <laughs> Rady dropping back, five-step drop, throws a laser. Number 30, Max Merholsky in coverage. Mitch's younger brother. Boy, all siblings out there now. Lots of siblings getting some action here late in the fourth. Just Mitch 20 was, seconds. Uh, game day graphic today. One oh, more yeah. play, perhaps. Yeah. Preble hurries to the line. They've got 10 seconds to get a snap off here. Rady takes a snap. Pressure up the middle, rolling out to the right. He's going to flush and look to throw deep. Throw is a line drive inside of midfield. This expires. We'll step aside, take a quick break. 49-6. to six. We'll recap this one in a bit. You're listening to Maple Park Football. Townline Pub and Grill. Looking for a place to grab some food? Stop at Townline. Taste the mouth-watering burgers, gourmet pizza, and, and endless appetizers. Offering a casual atmosphere and a lively feel. Why not stop in on the way to the game? Grab a bite to eat after the game, too. A night out, a group gathering after a sporting event, or even a birthday. We want to thank you for your patronage. Townline, where the people come for the food and stay for the fun. Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Oh. So, what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Wisconsin who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's conditioning. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross-training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play, and you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association and the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association. Today's Bayport football broadcast proudly supported by Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, and Irish spirit. We're with the Pedic and Sports Medicine Specialists of Green Bay. Bayport Hockey Boosters by Advanced Digital. Vandervest Harley-Davidson by Enduzi Sports Club. Synergy Sports Performance by Team Apparel and Specialties. Townline Pub and Grill by Bell & Health, Titletown Sports Medicine Orthopedics. The Press Times, your local paper and online source for Pirate Athletics. By Zesty's Frozen Custard Grill, the finest frozen custard in town. And by members of the NEW Sports Radio Broadcasters Club. Chris and Craig from Bayport High School in what is a 49-6 final. Yeah, that was right in the neighborhood of what I was kind of thinking. Pirates playing really good defense. Pounding the ball with thunder and lightning at the tailback position. And 49-6 is your final, Chris. Yeah, not much to be said. Just Bayport overpowering, dominant, and uh, gets out of here. They're playoff bound. They clinch a playoff spot. That's a lot of years in a row. I'm going to have the team stats here. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of Bayport High School students ready to greet the football team. A great scene here at Pirate Stadium. Full capacity. And this was certainly missed in the last year plus. So Bayport is at Southwest next week. Craig and Mike will have the call. Audio only. So we'll have the stream for you. There will be no video for you. I believe Green Bay Southwest does have video. I'm, uh, it won't be synced with us. Right. Um, but there is that capability, I do believe. But just sit back. A little scotch or something in your hand. We'll enjoy the uh, vocal. We'll bring our A game. Duo. Mike, Mike on play by play. Mike on color. <laughs> Craig with Craig a uh, side color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Craig, you're here yet? <laughs> <laughs> he only needs you for garbage time. That's right. That's, That's right. right. We'll have plenty of stuff to talk about. DePierre came back and defeated Notre Dame 21-17. So, thanks, Craig. Appreciate you coming on. Bud. You betcha. It was fun, like always, Chris. 49-6, your final for Craig Buckinger. I'm Chris Learman. Have a wonderful evening, Howard Swamico. Good. You're listening to Bayport Pirate Football on NEW Sports Radio.